Hello, lovely people. Welcome back to the Distinct and Jovial podcast. My name is Dom, and I'm joined by my lunatic of a co-host, Jerry. How are you doing, Jerry? <laughs> I'm very good, thank you, Dom. How are you? Yes, very good. The bit that you can't see, that you or you probably won't get to see, I may include them in some outtakes in like an episode later on, but it's the utter like five minute, or no, three minute, 40, 30 seconds of complete madness that we've just had. Um, Jerry has decided that he's going to stand up for today's podcast, so he's feeling very self-conscious, and he's sporting a wonderful denim jacket. Hey. But I just want to point out, it's not, I'm not doing double denim. So for <laughs> anyone listening or watching, I'm wearing cargo trousers, black cargo trousers, <laughs> just for the record. And I'm not wearing denim underpants or <laughs> denim socks. I was going to ask you what was the socks. <laughs> There's nothing else on my body that is denim. Yeah, I'm. I've got the jeans on. I'll take that. That's that's where I'm. That's at. fine. <laughs> We're sort of doing joint double denim. Joint double denim. Distinct to Which is allowed. Denim. Yay! <laughs> uh, it is the twenty first of. Is it the twenty first? Yes, it is the twenty first. I've it written is. down the twenty first, but sometimes I write these dates like so far in advance, and then we record on a different yeah. day to what I we originally put in the document. But it is the twenty first of October. A little bit earlier for us to record. Um, it is. It's one p.m. on a Saturday, um, on a very rainy Saturday uh, here in where I'm based. Um, I think it's probably a little bit brighter and sunnier where you are. You said it was cold. Um, marginally, it's a bit chilly. Mm. It's not exactly warm. Yeah. But it's not great out there, to be fair. No. So winter's here. It's done. You just need to embrace it. Embrace the darkness. Embrace the rain. It's going to be like this till next May. <laughs> and then it'll just... Deal with it. Then it'll be like continuously wet and windy up until like the middle of August. And be like, we've had no summer. Then we'll get to October and it'll be 26 degrees. And we'll be like, yeah. what the hell well, is going on? No, 36 degrees. Then it'll be drought. Then yeah. everyone will be... <laughs> Miserable. baking in the sunshine and the heat and we'll all be complaining about it for about three months and then we go back to to rain and cold weather and it's nice yes. two seasons two clear seasons two clear se- well, extreme I mean, like, winter yeah. <laughs> extreme winter <sighs> and extreme yeah. heat yeah that's all we get now isn't it <laughs> along with a complete as long as, it, as long as it's rainy and windy that's all that we want <laughs> it's all do you know what though i can deal with this better than i can deal with the heat i've always said it Mm, I know what you mean. I don't mean. I was discussing this the other day, and I think out of all the the weather that I can deal with, I can. I'm I'm okay with the heat. Like I I prefer the heat. I'm evidently cold blooded and should be sun basking for ninety nine percent of my life. Um, I can deal with the cold. Like I love a dry, crisp, cold morning, or or any part. But yeah, I can deal with that if it's cold. I can deal with the rain. The one weather I can't, I can't deal with the wind. I think the wind oh, just ruins. Like no, I think the wind ruins everything. If it's too windy, because if it's raining and windy, then you it you, you can't put like an umbrella up, and it just feels like complicated. Your hood gets blown everywhere, and it's just like fuck's sake, just leave me alone. <laughs> um, and if it's hot and windy, it's. A nice gentle breeze is okay, but if it's really windy when it's hot, it kind of stirs up the heat. Uh, and I've been in countries where it's like it's been really windy but really hot, and it kind of it's like having hot wind blown in your face is not a pleasant experience. Like a hair dryer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm not. I'm not a fan of hair dryers. <laughs> <laughs> Stick that in room one hundred one. Done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We don't even have to debate that. <laughs> uh, this is episode number twenty eight. Twenty eight. Does that make it, it if I can work that out? No, that's oh no, we've got a couple years, more before months. we before we're at six months. Yeah, two years, four months. Two years, four months. Who that's would have thought? Unbelievable. We I have love to do it. we have to do some big things when we hit some bigger milestones like episode fifty and stuff like that. Yeah. Can you imagine? Yeah. What about what about episode one hundred? We are gonna hit that. So Well we, episode one hundred would be planning. nearly eight years, wouldn't it? <clears throat> yeah, about that. Just trying to do the maths. Eight. Yeah, no, episode 96 will be eight years. So in... Uh, in exactly... Six and a half years. No, seven and a half years' time. No, yeah. what am I talking about? Six and a half years' time. Six and a half years' time. We will be right. at episode 100. And all of the celebrities that we would have called out <laughs> on Celebrity Call Out Corner, they're going to join us for our 100th episode. <laughs> 
We'll oh, just hire a big hall. <laughs> just <in>. hire a... <laughs> do a live in show podcast with an audience. No, listen, I'll do it and I'll do look, I'll sort out the food. So I'll do the you know, like pineapple pineapple <laughs> and cheese on sticks. cocktail sticks or pickled onion. I'll do that. Sausage rolls, we'll do crisps, different types. I'll get those Thai sweet chili crisps. You can't <laughs> be a those. you can't be a British like old school party, what I refer you're to. Right. Party no, you're rings, right. Party rings, pineapple rings. on cocktail sticks. That's the one. That's what the else bad have you boy. Got? Um, got to get sausage like rolls. Crisps, sausage rolls, cocktail yeah. sausages. But gristly sausage rolls. You can't get like good quality sausage no. rolls. It's not the same. It's got to be the really shit stuff. Yeah, so you got... get like 500 sausage rolls for three quid. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's absolutely the one, isn't it? <laughs> Otherwise, it doesn't taste right, no, it doesn't. and it won't take you back it's, to your childhood. You've got to taste cheap. It's got to taste cheap. <laughs> it's got to. <laughs> it doesn't work. I'm sure otherwise. Our celebrities would love that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I well, don't it's... think Keanu Reeves or Johnny Depp would have any issue with that whatsoever. <laughs> I mean, what is it? It's the it's the Lad Bible, isn't it? Where they do uh, food from like either UK or America or where the celebrity is the home yeah. from and then they compare it to somewhere else. And you always get like Greg's sausage roll versus something from America. Or, or we, you know, we've done the similar thing. We did Pop-Tarts yeah. versus some sort of other breakfast food. And it's like <laughs> Twinkies, for God's yeah. sake. <laughs> oh, for Top, I still can't believe you did that. Jesus. <laughs> like, normally if you describe a cake as moist, that, that's, that's fine. <laughs> but this wasn't, it was damp. <laughs> that's oh. the, exactly that oh, is that's the horrible. best way to describe it that it was horrible. damp <laughs> damp damp okay, we'll just use use one word to describe this cake what's the <laughs> one word that comes to your mind damp, damp. <laughs> nice thank you i to forward that onto our marketing department yeah get out of my swamp um <laughs> as always the views on this podcast are our own we'll add that that caveat in there because so we don't get into trouble <laughs> <laughs> It's just our, these are just our views, our opinions, <laughs> our, our <laughs> a-holes and belly buttons, and ours alone. Oh dear. Yes, everybody, everybody has one. <laughs> and these I just realized something that's going to annoy me the whole podcast is I've put the blue lid on the black bottom. <clears throat> that's going to really annoy me. That's, <laughs> that's what's thrown you off. That's what's thrown me off today. That's absolutely what's It's going to throw you off for the whole week. You're going to feel unsettled, and it's going to be just because of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. That's it. Uh, that must mean because I used the other one the other day. That must mean. Yeah, I can see the blue bottle. Yeah, the black lid's over there. So I must have put the black lid on the blue bottle on Thursday when I was <laughs> training. Idiot, Dom. <laughs> it's thrown you. It's yeah, thrown me. Thrown you. Thrown me. Well, one you've had about twenty-three hours of sleep, no, and now you've put you the wrong lid on that. the wrong bottle. <laughs> Yeah, look at this. This is it's, this was this last just... night. There you go. Let's see if that comes through. Uh, is that blurry I can still? See is good and eighty-two. Ah, uh, look at the bit can't, below. I can't see that. I can't read that. Still can't read that. Oh, yeah, here we go. Time and sleep. Eleven. Whoa. Eleven hours. And that's minutes. that's on a like a pessimistic, like. Fitbit, like where it's like, oh, you were awake for an hour and forty-eight. Like, but was I though? Like, I didn't wake up during the night, so was That's I awake? Look, two hours and six minutes of deep sleep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a good focus. Sleep. Come on, webcam. Ooh. What's a bit underneath that? Restoration, fifty-seven percent below resting. I don't even know what that means. Sleeping heart rate. What does oh. It say? Oh yeah, so that's uh, that fifty-seven percent of my during my sleep, my heart rate was below my resting heart rate, and eleven percent of the time it was above my resting heart rate. So it's fine, but yeah, eighty-two percent, eighty-two, good. Um, above your resting heart rate? No, eleven percent was above my resting heart rate. So yeah. my resting heart rate is sixty-two-ish at the moment. Um, what which were you meant... doing? Taekwondo in your sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Could be. Oh, what's the equivalent of kata? Well, patterns or the to- tolls. Patterns, that's tolls. it. You're doing patterns, yeah. Yeah, tolls. You're doing patterns cool. in bed. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, I mean, like, you've got your ridiculousness. 
Uh, what does it say? My readiness score. Only says my readiness score is 90. 90 Dom, you never points. sleep. This has really thrown you. <laughs> what? I never sleep. You, oh, you never, you've, you've, you've never slept that much. So yeah, I can I do. tell this has really thrown you. I think the bit that's thrown me is um, I didn't expect it because I've been sleeping fairly normally the last few weeks. And just for some strange reason, I just went to bed and, didn't, and then I didn't just didn't set an alarm for today because I was like, uh, we're not recording the podcast till 1 p.m. So I've got loads of time and then thinking, oh, yeah, I've got loads of time. I'll probably wake up normal. You know, you get into a routine like you wake up ready for work. So uh, week weekdays, I normally wake up about 5 a.m. for the gym. Um and then, uh, the, you know, and which means at the weekends, I'm normally awake between sort of uh, half past six, seven. I get like an extra hour and a half s- s- hour sleep. Um, but yeah, I just kind of woke up thinking, oh, I feel a bit fuzzy. And then looked at the time and <laughs> it's like, fuzzy. and it's like half past 11. I'm like, oh, great. Where, where's the rest of the day gone? <laughs> fuzzy. And the worst bit was is because my phone was on low battery, it actually died overnight. So then I was like, my phone doesn't work. <laughs> and then it's like, right, well, I need to oh. now, you know, cut my hair and make myself reasonably presentable for the podcast. And and I need to have breakfast. And oh, the F, I missed. The, the gut thing was it was the USA uh, qualifying last night. You it's missed a, the qualifying. So I missed the qualifying last night. And then oh, right. I've missed the sprint qualifying. Oh, it's all... It's all fine. Just I'm just a bit like I'm not with it. <laughs> I'm not quite with it this morning. I can tell. It's fine. You're gonna perk up in a minute. Yes. I am. Right, should we go into the first bit that we're gonna do? Um, Let's do it. We're gonna go, <laughs> go into room one oh one. Let's do Good it. Good old room one oh one. Because I need to have a moan about Royal Mail again. I need to oh, have I can't, a moan. Yeah. Listen, I'm as you saw my notes, like seriously, what What's happened now? Have I told you about the story about the shower part that I was ordering? <laughs> no. Right. Okay. So for context, <clears throat> a little bit of context for people. And I think I'm going to expand my Royal Mail thing to delivery companies, right? Because delivery companies have one purpose in life. Their purpose is to deliver goods, right? <laughs> to stop that. It can't be that hard. It's an easy mission statement. Yeah, it should fair. be an easy mission statement. So on my shower, you, you get the bit where you put the shower head actually in. So you can kind of unhook mm. it and hook it back in. And it's like, you like a, just a U-shaped item. Now, one of the bits had started to snap. So at some point it was going to snap and you just have to like half a U. So it wouldn't be anywhere to put the shower head and it would fall off. And so I was like, okay, well, I need to order a new part for that bit. I've done it before. If you go into the middle of it, you can unscrew it. So you don't, you don't need to take the whole shower off the wall because I can't, you can't do that. It's all embedded. There is a way to do it, but that bit's super glued because that bit's also snapped as well. So I didn't want to unpick the super glue. But anyway, so I ordered a bit off of Amazon for something like six quid or something like that, seven ninety nine, right? And um, this uh, parcel was going to be delivered. Amazon Prime, so next day, was going to be delivered by DPD. So it's fine. So I get a notification sort of saying, um, we're going to deliver between 10 and 1, as you normally do. And I think that's fine. I work from home. I'm in the flat. Anyway, I get a notification 10 minutes past 10. So 10 minutes into my thing. We've tried to deliver and failed. Well, you haven't because I've not heard the buzzer go. I haven't been on a call. So I'm, I'm here. Nothing. So I look in the app and they're supposed to send a photo of when they failed to deliver. And the photo, honest to God, right, the photo, he must have put the phone underwater. It was so blurry. <laughs> like, I didn't have a clue where it was. It could have been anywhere in the world. He took right? it, it to his been... water bottle. <laughs> yeah, right? There's no photo at all. I said, For God's sake. So I messaged DPD, basically going, what the actual fringe? And they went, oh, he's apparently tried. And I went, absolute rubbish has he tried because I'm in the flat. And they said, well, have a look at the photo. And I said, have you looked at the photo? Oh, yeah, that's a bit of a poor photo, isn't it? Yes, right? Tell him now to turn around and come back. Like, I need this part. I'm really sorry. We can't do that. He'll retry tomorrow. Well, okay. Rude words. I'm moving on. So the next day, I get the notification. And then they're going to deliver between... Six th- uh, no, 5 and 6.30 in the evening. And I'm like, this is now Tuesday. So I'm off training at Taekwondo. I'm thinking, great. So I'm actually going to miss that parcel. But let's just see what happens. So before it gets around, I look in the app. And I look, there is actually instructions on what to do when I'm not in. 
I, and those instructions are key in the entry code into the building, go into my building up to my flat and leave it outside my flat door. That's the explicit instructions and the provided, I have provided the entry instructions. So A, why didn't he try them on the Monday to deliver the first part in the first place? And I'm thinking, fine, hopefully he'll try that today. Anyway, sure enough, halfway through Taekwondo, I feel, hear my phone beep and I think, okay, fine, whatever. I go back to it and it says, failed delivery. <laughs> we'll, tr- we'll try again tomorrow. <sighs> oh, so brilliant. I phoned NDPD and I go, what the hell? And I go, look, and fortunately this time the photo was clear. He was stood outside my building. So he's got the right door. Right? And I'm like, why didn't they follow the I'm not in home instructions for the second time running? We don't know, sir. Well, tell him to do it. Right? It's not that difficult. Anyway, day three of attempting to read deliver now. Oh, this um, is- so, so he sends it. So this time he actually ring. It, it's a different driver this time. So obviously this driver doesn't work on Wednesdays. Works on Monday, Tuesdays, but it was a different driver. This driver rang my buzzer and I answered. And I, he said, and I, I let him in and he come upstairs. He goes, here's your parcel. Thank you very much. Great. Brilliant. I'm thinking this is problem solved. Unscrew the bit. Go to plug it in. Doesn't fit. <laughs> right. I was thinking, like, how many, how many different ways is there to have a connection, like, between, oh, you know, on brilliant. a screw and a different length, like, between, like, you know, <laughs> it's, on the, it's on a pole, so I'm not take, taking it off the pole. It's literally just this section here. How many different oh, lengths, bits, oh. and why is it so different? Right, surely it should just be a screw in and out, and that's it. There shouldn't be any difference, but apparently not. And I thought, oh, bugger it. So, anyway, so I send it back. And I look online and I find a different part. And this one was like nine ninety nine. I was thinking, okay, let's go for the more expensive part. Let's just see if it will work, right? That one, lot smoother, wasn't delivered by DPD. It was delivered by, ironically, um, what are they? They used to be Hermes, but they're now something out, Evra or something like that. Oh, every, every. Every, every. Yeah. And I'll be uh, like, I'll give them the due. The delivery driver that I have for every, because he also does my HelloFresh par- parcels, is brilliant. He is on time and his, and his notifications are excellent. Absolute fabulous man. He's never failed me. Uh, and in fact, it, um, this one this one wasn't on Amazon Prime, so it took until the next Monday to come through. And he delivered it with my HelloFresh parcel on that Monday. So I had two boxes. I was like, great. This is brilliant. Pick this That's one up. Efficient. Yeah, yeah. Pick this one up. <laughs> unscrew it. Went screw it on. Doesn't fit either. Oh, uh, what the... Fr- <laughs> what the fringe. Fine. Okay. Fine. So I look up the make of my shower, and I think, okay, and I then I go to the company the beer. I think it's Mira is the name of the, the company. They normally do most of the shower bits and pieces. Um, this story is still going to continue, by the way. I've not even got to the Royal Mail bit. This is fantastic. I was going to say, there's no mention of Royal Mail so far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm we, we get, we'll, we'll get there. I'm impressed. So. I get through and, and to be fair to them, they said, we'll contact you within 72 hours. And it was about 48 hours later. I'd like to point in, bear in mind, it's currently held on by, my shower head is currently held on by duct tape. Solver of all things, duct tape, brilliant stuff. Excellent. Whoever made duct tape needs to be earn a Nobel Peace Prize, I think. Genius. Well, certainly a knighthood. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Something like MBE, OBE, yeah. something like that. Um, so Mira come back to me and go, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, that specific part, so again, they'll send me the whole part that slides up and down the, the, the rail, but I know I could unscrew it, so I only need to do that. They're like, yeah, yeah, it's this part. They give me the part number and everything. You can order it from us. It's thirty four ninety nine, <laughs> And I was like, are you having a bubble? <laughs> 35 quid for a part that big. Because they know you can't get it anywhere else. <laughs> well, unfortunately, they gave me the part number, so I went and researched the part number. And I found it on, and the website is called like Shower Spares. It's literally called that. Um, and it was eighteen ninety nine. I thought, well, that's better than 34 quid. I'll take okay. that. So purchase this part. And they go, right. And, and I'm thinking, and they said, because it's not Amazon, so I know it's not going to be next day. They're like, it's going to take like three days to get to you. And I've ordered it on a Friday. Anyway, ordered it Friday morning. Uh, they dispatch it within an hour. I'm like, wow, well done, this company. This is amazing. We're sending it by Royal Mail. Oh, God damn it. Fine. Okay. There's a catch. Good news and bad news. <laughs> but they sent it 48 hours tracked by Royal Mail. I'm thinking, that's great. Okay. Actually, it's really good. So Royal Mail has said, we're going to deliver it on Monday. 
okay, that's that's pretty good, you know. Friday, Saturday, not deliver on Sunday, Monday, fine. And they've given me a window of when it'll be delivered. Great, that's perfect. Anyway, so we get to Monday and I get a notification from Royal Mail. And the exact notification, I'm not even joking, Royal Mail have emailed this. I'm really sorry, we've delivered it to the wrong distribution centre. <laughs> like, what? So for context, I live in South Somerset, right? Uh, so it goes to the Bristol distribution center and then it gets shipped out to somewhere local. Now, ironically, it normally gets shipped to Exeter. Then it comes back up to me in South Somerset if, I, if I'm doing something like DPD. Um, but that right. seems to be the way. Instead, they sent it over to Wiltshire to Trowbridge. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> you do. The, the parcel has my address on it. The parcel should know where it's going. And they go, we're terribly sorry, we're rerouting it. And I can go into the tracking centre and I can see, arrived at Bristol Distribution Centre, sent to Trowbridge. Okay, your systems have one job to, to like, I'm, I don't understand job, how it's, it's, surely it's an automated system. I don't, <laughs> I, I've, uh, fundamentally, I don't understand how you've managed to get that wrong. And I'm thinking, great. So I then get the notification that it's been redistributed back to the Bristol uh, distribution center. I think, great, fine, they'll do it the next day. So I was thinking Tuesday. No, that apparently resets the 48 hours track. So it didn't <laughs> arrive until Thursday. Oh my God. And on a and one even, hour delivery. And I was they, like, did, they packaged it up and they sent it. They got it to Royal Mail within one hour. One hour. And then Royal Mail <laughs> then it sent it to wrong. the wrong distribution center. <laughs> I'm like, how do you manage that? How do you even attempt? Oh, brilliant. brilliant. So I messaged Royal Mail and was like, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> and they went, I'm just really sorry. We've made a mistake. Yeah, but for God's <laughs> like, I like do something like it cannot. I don't fathom how it is so difficult to get a delivery done. I don't understand why it's difficult to go. Oh, the person is not in, but they've left instructions on how to get into the building and leave it in a safe space. I'll do that instead. I need to take a photo. I don't know how difficult it is to take a photo that's not so blurry that looks like so Sonic the Hedgehog's flipping taking it as he's run past my building. And I don't understand road how, yeah, how you can send it to the wrong distribution centre. <laughs> with a camera going, meep, meep. <laughs> so that, that is my first Royal Mail rant or my delivery phase. Oh my God, my, there's another Royal Mail rant. There's a second. Oh so, my God, this is the Royal Mail episode. This is the Royal Mail episode. So the other bit, and I think the bug <laughs> might still be there. In fact, I'm going to try it while I'm here. Uh, uh, Royal Mail <laughs> redirection. So um, there is a, um, uh, I, there's a friend of ours who uh, is, uh, uh, had to move back abroad. And they're both me and Jerry. Uh, shout out to him and I hope everything goes well for him. Um, but he's trying to redirect his mail, understandably, right? He, he's does and he, he's going to he's redirecting it within the UK, but that's the thing that you can do. So if you go and, and at the time of recording, I'm going to stipulate at the time of recording, if you go to Royal Mail, if you search Royal Mail and then mail redirection, there is like a, a thing, right? Moving home, redirection, redirecting your mail to ensure all your mail moves with you. Great, fine, fabulous, fantastic. Right, you can redirect your mail to any UK or overseas address for three, six, or twelve months from just a thirty-six quid. So you need to register to sign up. Now, I actually already have a Royal Mail account, but this is where it gets fun. If you go to this place and you hit register, um, oh, it works! Oh, they fixed it. They fixed it. <clears throat> They've actually fixed it. So you can now register. But as of a couple of days ago, when I originally tried to do this with somebody, and I think it's because I put a complaint in, and I don't understand how you can have this fundamental part of your website broken. Both me and Jerry work for a uh, within technology within our company. So oh, we, kn close. we know that if something is broken, we get absolutely <laughs> ruined. Like if something's broken, you get hit with a big stick. Oh, yeah. Especially something as fundamental as registration for new customers. Right? <laughs> Fairly fundamental. fundamental. We want their money, etc., etc. Anyway, it's now not broken, but I fortunately still do have all the information. But when you clicked on that registration, it would just go, thank you for registering. 
like a, a, a success page. And if you look at the copyright, it would say copyright Royal Mail 2018. <laughs> like, so you have set up a failed, ironically, a failed web redirect on your mail redirect <laughs> part of your website. So understandably, this person hasn't been able to redirect their mail recently because he couldn't register to now to redirect them out. They have now fixed it. I did to be, I put, I, I just went, well, sod this, I'm going to the complaints. And I just went, registration doesn't work, folks. <laughs> but the fact that I, a customer, had to, had to point tell out. them that their website wasn't working is that a bit is of a dis- And I can understand, like, I can understand if it's a small bit of the website, you know, oh, this specific link on this specific page yeah. is not, is not, but, you know, like especially if it's a, isn't it? If it's a content yeah. business managed thing and it's typed in by somebody from the business, that's a mistake. But fundamentally, your website redirects or your uh, your registration page is not working. Is that not covered by an automated test of some description <laughs> that you journey test through your systems before you release the website? Makes absolutely no sense. <clears throat> so, yes. Uh, mental absolutely mental how they could do that the thing that did annoy me with their response is on the response on the thing i said is i i put in the complaint that says by the way your redirect your registration is not working so i can't do things like redirection and i labeled a few other things and so what do they do they go if you want to redirect your, redirect your mail you can put in this phone number that's it what about the other three things that i put on there that you can't register for <laughs> So it's a yeah. it is a shocker. <laughs> it's an absolute shocker. I think the term is piss poor. <laughs> yeah. I think the term is <clears throat> couldn't care less. <laughs> As in I take no pride. Yeah. We take no pride. And by the way the V's are our own, but please don't sue us. I don't think I do you know, honestly to a certain extent I don't <laughs> care because <laughs> what, you want to be sued cause... by Royal Mail? You, I mean, you, what, you're up be... for the fight, Dom, aren't you? Yeah. Let's face I'm it. like, bring it on. Like, <laughs> bring I'm it compl- on. <laughs> yes, I'm complaining about you on a public platform, <clears throat> but are you providing the service that I expect from you as a customer? Because right, the other thing, right, on this, this is the one that drives me nuts. So I'm really trying to improve my... I'm, I'm on it today. I'm now on it. I've woken up now, Jerry. <laughs> you have. You've really perked <laughs> up. I knew it was going to happen. I have... the. Th- the thing I cannot stand is spam letters through your mailbox because I really am trying to like start improve you know my environmental factor on things that I do. So I've you know I'm really trying to increase my recycling as much as possible, um, you know things like that. Um, and I have filled in the goddamn form that says please don't put spam mail through my <laughs> mailbox three times. Do I still get spam mail through my mailbox? Yes. In fact, I think it's a practice that should just be made illegal. I agree with that. That that's a room one hundred and one item right there. Yeah, spam isn't it? physical mail. Yeah, your mail spam box. physical mail should not be allowed. Because so I live in a flat. What do you think the most common uh, spam mail I get through my flat my flat uh, mailboxes? Gardening services. Not quite close. Close conservatories. Conserv- <laughs> I'm on a first floor flat. That overlooks a road. And yeah, below me is a it, public footpath. But they could build it out. So it just juts out of the, the apartment. Yeah, it Complex. gets taken out every time a lorry drives past. Yeah, it's fine. But in the short period that you can enjoy it, at least you enjoy it and think, that was nice. I had a conservatory for about 37 minutes before I got <laughs> wiped out by, by a DPD distribution <laughs> lorry. It didn't deliver. It didn't deliver. We took out your conservatory, but we we took out your conservatory whilst delivering your shower unit, your shower part, to the distribution centre in (laughs) Drew. We're going to drive past. (laughs) We're going to taunt you with it. (laughs) Full, like, full Monty (laughs) Python. Go away or I'll taunt you for a second time. Unfortunately, I can't do a French accent. Got, but <laughs> I've just got visions of you sitting there with a nice cup of tea. <laughs> the conservatory just being wiped out. 
<laughs> totally wiped out by the Royal Mail ban. <laughs> Thanks for that. Oh my god. <clears throat> Anything else to add on that? <laughs> anything? Honestly, it's just thirty-three minutes twenty. I know we're thirty-three minutes Royal in. Mail. To... <laughs> DVD. It's just hilarious. The thing is, I don't understand you why it's so difficult. Me. I don't know. I honestly did not expect to hear another <laughs> another Royal Mail story, but you just you just pulled out a couple of humdingers there, right yeah, yeah, there. Yeah. It keeps, it's the gift that keeps giving. Yeah, I reckon I've it? probably used the complaint service on Royal Mail more than anything else. <laughs> they probably have my email like blacklisted. Yeah, oh, here probably. he is again. What does he want Redi- this time? Let's redir- <laughs> redirect his complaint. <laughs> Actually, if I've got any jobs and fancy matching my salary, maybe <laughs> maybe I could go. No. And <laughs> yeah, you could have real impact there. Could do. Wouldn't take a lot to sort out the. Uh... A customer journey. <laughs> <laughs> Just walk in. Stop being shit. <laughs> Sorry, mother. Oh, God. That's brilliant. <laughs> so there you go. Room 101, delivery services that don't work. Yeah, I think we've covered multiple things. It's good because it's cathartic because you've been able to vent. Plus, it's a Room 101, so that automatically goes in. I don't think there's any debate. You put a very strong case forward. <laughs> So, yeah, somebody counter me. Somebody counter me. Come on. Come at yeah, me. Was it, like, so you sit in the park and you say, like, Royal Mail is shit. Convince me otherwise. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That bloke yeah. on the table, Royal yeah, Mail yeah. are terrible. That's terrible. It. Convince me otherwise. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I must admit. Okay, so I'm going to play devil's advocate here. Mm. Royal Mail have actually been very, very good to me. I, I think this is very unfortunate. I think there are some people that have bad experiences particular people that have bad experiences with particular companies and i think i think you and royal mail are like (laughs) oil and water it's just never going to work it's It's never going to mix (laughs) i've i've had nothing but good experiences with them to be fair i mean like when you consider it like 99 percent of the time they do actually deliver like your post that's not that i receive much fortunately well apart from conservatory but I the, the, I, it must I, it's probably more a the, i mean the registration on the website not working that's that's just a poor website form now we don't know the in, infrastructure of royal mail right? we don't know whether they run their own website or whether it's contracted out to a third party True. Um, we don't know what third parties involved you don't know what the like how much they're willing to spend on said thing right and and as that's something that we we've both done in in our careers before you can see where when you cut costs where things get without a different thing get piss poor right in terms of the actual delivery do i live at a complicated address yes right i have my my flat has two postcodes which does make it complicated how so big is it it's not very big there does are does it span two counties <laughs> no there are 21 flats no, there are 20 flats because it goes up to 21, but there isn't a flat 13. Um, but Well, seriously? There yeah, yeah, seriously. There is a, yeah, my, oh, wow. my next door neighbor is, is 12 and 15 because I live at flat 14. Um, and the building, the building itself has a postcode. So it's like, I can never remember the actual like address of it, but it's like, you know, I'm going to make up the postcode <laughs> so I'm not revealing my actual postcode here. But, it, you know, it's like, uh, 125 to 167, uh, then the road, then the location, and then the postcode is like, you know, uh, let me just think of two random numbers, ZX152 BU or something like that. And then my actual flat is like flat X, name of the apartment, and then the same road name, obviously the same count, uh, town and obviously the same county. And then it's like, it's still ZX, but instead of like one, two, it's like three, seven or something. And then, you know, four X, Y. And yeah, which means nine, like 99% of things get delivered to me successfully. So um, I never have a problem with anything like Domino's is normally fine. Royal Mail seem like when, when Royal Mail actually go to deliver things, they get it to me successfully. They just choose not to quite often deliver me things or deliver me spam mail, whatever. 
Um, there is one other beef I've got with Rommel, which I'll just explain in, another, in a bit as well. <laughs> um, uh, DPD are like 50% time successful and um, every are pretty good. The one that doesn't work <clears throat> is Deliveroo because for some strategic reason, my postcode actually points to the houses that are behind the flats. But the houses behind the flats, you can't, the way that the map works, you can't, like, you pull up to my flat, which is along a main, a fairly substantial main road. To get to the houses here, you have to go along here to a set of traffic lights up, then across there, and then back down. You can't, like, access it. And that's probably, well, it's a 20-minute walk. It's a, well, no, I can tell you it's about a six-minute run. Um, so it's probably, what, a three- to four-minute drive. But you've got to go, like, round like that so if they yeah. try and deliver that it's another six minutes from sort of get back round to kind of go to where your actual flat is and you can't seem to change it on delivery so that sometimes does cause some confusion um i always use the postcode that's related to my flat because that's the one that's most successful but that one doesn't work for delivery if i ever want a delivery so i'm just thinking of all the possibilities of how much fun you can have <laughs> with number 13 Mm. And that postcode, like you could, you could just invite a whole bunch of people over that you don't don't like. So <laughs> Come to flat thirteen. You go number thirteen. It's number th flat thirteen. <laughs> what's it's interesting? Press the buzzer you, for thirteen. Because obviously you've got that like postcode lookup, don't you? Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> obviously, although that makes no sense, right? So what order would you, if you were doing a drop down of postcode lookup, what order would you do it in? Flat one, flat two, flat three, wouldn't you? I'd probably start with flat thirteen now, but yeah. <laughs> no, it starts at flat. It starts at flat eleven, <laughs> and I know why. I think I know why. Okay. Because in alphabetical order, flat two would be below flat eleven because of the way that alphabetical ordering works. Like <laughs> you don't combine things. Good old programming. So ridiculous. But yeah, it does like flat one eleven to 19 then it does flat two then two and then 20 and 21 then it does flat three so whenever you do a postcode lookup it doesn't really make too much sense about <laughs> which, <laughs> which kind of reminds the... me it reminds me of the sat nav in my car which is actually very very good but mm. not once has it recognized the house number of any no. address that i've put in which no, is really weird did. no it never does why why is that i don't even know why it's a feature because well, because the road could be a mile long, so you just need to know where along that mm. mile you need to go. But it doesn't matter. Literally, I've had that car for almost four years, mm. and every single postcode I put in says, "What number? What house number would you like to go to?" And I go, yeah. oh, well, fifty-five." It says, "Can't find 55. And you go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I know it exists because I've been to it before once, and need to get back to it. But it won't. It won't. But it still takes you. To the house or yeah. the address, like quite accurately. It's a bit weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's only a problem if you've, you're on a road that's got like one to 76 <laughs> and it's like yeah, three mile yeah. long road. You're like, yeah. where the, but then you, you know, then you sort of crawl down the road going, where are the numbers? Yeah. And then they do something stupid with the numbers. It's like 67, 65, 63. And on the other side, you've got the even numbers. You kind of are like, well, hang on, which am I odd or even? And then look down to that one. Um, but I have like had it. But then I've had it before where on one side it's going 67, 65, 63. And on the other side, it's going two, four. <laughs> so it kind of does that. <laughs> so, so you get to, so you're like, right, well, I need, <sighs> I need house 24. So you get to the other, you get to like where you, where it should be opposite. And then you realize, no, it's the other end of the bloody road <laughs> because of the way they've done it. <laughs> <laughs> this is brilliant. So Dom. Tell me, any other <laughs> stories, anything else you'd like to add? I don't think there's any, not on Royal Mail. I mean... <laughs> well, there must have something. You said there was one other thing. I can't let oh, this go. I mean, just generally people not reading messages. Oh. I think... The, the, yeah, the big... what's that about? It's... Because I actually, I think I misunderstood that. So, no... I think it's just something that's happened recent a lot in the thing. Like I've sent out a message and it says, I need an email by X date, please. And then I get right. Yeah. It's approved as a team's message. And I'm like, yeah, but I need it as an email. Yeah. <laughs> I see what you're saying. Okay. 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I I thought the context of that was because I'm I'm bad at this. So if somebody sends me a WhatsApp message, for example, I can sometimes take forever to reply. No, well, that's 99% okay. Ninety-nine percent of the time, is it though? I don't know. Yeah, it I think that's okay. Out of people. <laughs> no, I'm okay. Like because. For me, in like WhatsApp messages or or text messages or things like that, it's an async communication. So I don't care if you take like three days. I have a few people that I'll send like three or four messages and they'll only read like message one and message four and only respond to that. And I'm like, can you respond to all <laughs> yeah, four parts? That'd be grand. <laughs> right? Not to call anybody out, Laura. Um, Ooh. That, that, you know, you read all the <laughs> sections of my message and respond. <laughs> You're in right trouble now. I am in right trouble. <laughs> you are in right. You've done it now. You've done did it now. But, so, uh, so, Jerry, I, I was going to say, I don't know if you've got your phone by you, but if, if you show me your phone, like if you look at mine, I don't know if you can see it. Yes, I've got my to-do list, which shows how many tasks I've done, but I have no notifications outstanding. Okay. No emails. Nothing. <laughs> okay. Are you going to be able to do the same and you're going to have like 4,000 unread emails? <laughs> I hate to say this. <clears throat> Do it. I've had one missed call from oh, okay. my own daughter. <laughs> I've got one unread WhatsApp message. Actually, I know it's more. There's more than one. Because yeah, I know there's more than one. Yeah. Um, Samsung account legal terms updated. <laughs> BBC News update. Mm. temperature update oh i turned those types of notifications off yeah so yeah i've got a fair bunch of them and something from the play store <laughs> <laughs> so but how yeah. many unread emails how many unread emails that's the test isn't it oh uh, well okay so i'm gonna really embarrass myself now really embarrass myself Do i it. don't check emails on my phone oh so you don't have the email application on there at all no, it gets worse. Oh, go on then. So I do have mm. the email application. I just never use it. Does it Does it have a little like number that says how many unread emails you've got? Um, I will check. Bear with me, caller. <laughs> <clears throat> no, it doesn't. I mean, like, that is my email inbox. It's, like, it's, it's empty. Like Lego bricks. Oh, my God. I wish my working box looked like that. <laughs> Hashtag just saying. Oh, I can't hear you, Jerry. <laughs> oh, you haven't no, lost is me. Is that again, me? Am I back? Ah, uh, you're back. Am I back? Yes, you're back. Yeah, I've just had a sound glitch. Not unusual. Yeah, it's always your technology. It is your my broadband. Technology. Is it yours? Is is it actually your That was sound? my yeah, it was it was my was sound. It? Yeah, I've got a weird glitch on my PC that sometimes just switches off my sound. I've got to celebrate this. Because this is <laughs> this is not related to me. This is not my fault this time. I love it. Hey, it was me with the PC issues at the beginning. See, that's a good thing about standing up, because you can dance. <laughs> yeah but nobody's listening can watch that <laughs> yeah that's true i'm gonna shoot. shout out to uh-huh I was, i've got more I, i'm trying to decide who list what people listens to based on the more whether it's the <clears throat> uh pod whether it's the s- audio version or the youtube version now i know samwise will have it up on her television yeah, she, like yeah, 40 does, television she? and she'll be she'll be cross stitching at this moment <laughs> probably <laughs> under a blanket she'll be sat there cross stitching under a blanket oh. with our faces blown up to like you know however big the television is <laughs> by the way i just laughed there it sounds like i've got it sounds like i've, I've had a packet of cigarettes today already <laughs> anyway, what the fringe well you've already had your movie voice on today that's true <laughs> As I just knocked that out of the way. <laughs> and he knocked himself out with his wrong. mic. <laughs> In a world. <laughs> so good. <laughs> that's, that's all I know. That's all I can say. I don't know what else I can say. In a world. <laughs> but I also know that um, others listen to him on the 
uh, you know, in the car. So I know Swanee listens to it on the car normally, which is great because I can tell him that I've lost the game. He'll get really irate when he's in the car <laughs> yeah, not again. now when he listens to this. And then he'll forget to message he's gonna me. Get <laughs> he's going to get me back. He did get me back the other day. Um, I did message the poor man. Um, what did I message him? It was, it was quite amusing. Ah, oh, yes. Oh, I've got to tell this story. Um, I- I'm going to tell this story as a... Um, Starter for 10 for a, a, a sneak preview for a later part in the podcast. Um, okay. I'm, going to tell you a, I'm going to tell you a Taekwondo story, um, which, will, which will segue later onto the podcast, which will be quite interesting. But I have to tell you this. So yesterday, seven years ago, was the 2016 World Cup in uh, it's gone. Uh, Hungary, uh, Budapest. Or Budapest, I should say. Let's pronounce it correctly. Wonderful city, by the way. Absolutely, my favourite city I've, I've ever heard. Visited. It's amazing. Yeah, it's amazing, I and I, I want to go back there. I, I, I'm, I'm really determined to go back to Budapest. Um, but uh, we actually, this is when uh, Swanee was competing still, um, and uh, we did what we call. So we we hired two like apartments. So rather than being in a hotel, we were in an apartment with like a some kitchen stuff to kind of. They said to save money, but actually it just made for a better atmosphere because we had like a, a living room and a kitchen that like all of us squad members could come to and hang out. And it was great. And there wasn't too many. It was quite a small, small, select few of us, um, uh, which it was it was really nice. Um, so and but because we're so small, the way that an ITF Taekwondo tournament works is they will it's set over, they say, five days. Uh, sorry, a week. So you're way in on the mon- on the Monday or something like that, um, and you know that'll be to you know so you have to make weight. So if you need to be in minus eighty one kilos, you need to be eighty one point five or less. We give you a point five, like lenience for clothes, because um, we don't do like a UFC type thing where you can just basically strip with nothing on. You have to wear um, dobok being the suit that we wear. You have to wear dobok trousers and a t shirt. So. Um, I don't spar internationally, so I I don't have to weigh in, but I have to register to say I'm here. Like, let me do my 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 forms, my patterns, my tolls. Um, which mean, and then you sort of then it sort of goes Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday morning. It's normally how it goes. Um, and during that, you will have individual events and team events. Um, and then you have four. There are four events. You've got patterns or forms or tolls is the Korean for it in, in ours. Um, uh, then you've got sparring, which is in our case is kickboxing style. So two points for a kick to the body, two, three points for a kick to head, one point for a punch anywhere else. Um, and it's deemed as light contact. Um, it never ends up being light contact. Um, then you've got um, breaking. So you have a board holder and you set up X number of, white boards so whether that's three uh, and then you've got a punch knife and strike uh side kick turning kick reverse turning kick are the five breaks um and then you've got what we call special technique um which the best way to describe it is you have to kick a um you know those like pool float floaties that you get like that you like you know you can kind of hold them and they're sort of like this shape so oh, you can like yeah, do yeah, just yeah. like you know not just using your arms or something like that, just using your legs, yeah. etc. And it looks like one of them on a on a big on a on a thing that they can adjust. But you know it'll be flat, and you've got like jumping jumping front leg for like r- upwards kick, um, front snap kick, as we kind of refer to it. But it's for the men, it's two point eight meters high, <laughs> so two hundred eighty centimeters from floor to the ceiling. Bloody so hell. what's that in? Uh, yeah, nine know. foot so it starts at nine foot um and then and then you've also got other ones so they have one and the height isn't relevant but you have to jump over a bar that's 1.4 meters high so 4.5 feet so you've got to jump over the bar and then side kick it and there and then there's ones that you've got jumping turning kick jumping reverse turning kick jumping back kick but they're all like 2.5 a plus and that's where it starts. Like the really, like the the world champions, they will kick that easily, and then and you'll normally get five or six that can kick that easy, and then they raise the height. So I've seen it. I think I've seen it. I think I've seen it at three meters. 
than before. But, Three meters. Yeah. What? Yeah. But you have okay. individual. I am getting to my story. I've realized I've rabbited on a bit about the forms <laughs> of a World Cup and not actually got to the story where Adam was uh, wanting to kill me. Um, really, I should get him to tell the story when he comes back on the podcast, but it's a very uncomfortable story for him. Um, anyway, we you do them individual and teams. So, you know, I'll do my individual patterns and then you can do a team pattern. So there's five of you on the floor at the same time and you can add in like rhythmic rhythmic elements so instead of all being just one two at the same time you might suddenly go one two three four five and then you carry on again so you can add like impressive bits and stuff like that there were so few of us we didn't have a team day so we did what we call man day yeah a little bit sexist but basically all the males on the team went out for somewhere and all the females went out somewhere um and um what that normally entails is uh in a is going and doing something around the city or place that we are. So Jamaica, we did loads of different bits, but um, Budapest, we just went and explored. We just went for a wander. Um, And the traditional Taekwondo thing is because normally most of us are flexible uh, and bits and pieces like that is you try and get like high section sidekicks in different place. So there are, there's a picture of us on the, on the hello hungry sign in between each of the letters and all of, and it's like three, two, one, everyone kick, (laughs) right? Take a photo quick. And then you get like this lovely photo of it saying hello hungry with all our individual members like kicking really high. Um, it gets annoying because flexibility is my weak, weakest point. But some of the other and some of the um, especially the the female competitors are really flexible. So their sidekicks are like up here and it's like, I'm a foot taller. Why are you kicking higher than me? That's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> but we were going round this thing uh, around Budapest and we were doing kicks. Um, so the two, two bits from this story. Um, the first bit is um, our, the second uh, second half of the day. We found a wall in um, in the cathedral at the top part of Budapest. Um, now you could get on the wall really easy, and it was probably a good sort of like I don't know three foot wide. Like it was a reasonably substantial wall. The other side of the wall was a forty foot drop. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> so we were like, hmm. But it was it was a really good place to take a sidekick because you could like photograph because to get up on the wall so when you're photographing you're photographing slightly up so it looks like like a high section one and then you get the the cathedral behind you it was a really good place so there were four of us doing it It was me my coach um swanee who we've had on the podcast and and another another chap and the and this this other chap was really flexible like really good anyway so he gets uh so (laughs) swanee and my coach get on this wall like at individual times and they're like oh like oh, we don't want to do it it's really really high i didn't get on it because i'm terrified of heights and i've been a bit wobbly just on flat ground anyway so i was like oh, there's no way i'm gonna fall over so they're like quick kick and then lean towards you so if you're gonna when you wobble you don't fall backwards oh off God. the spot <laughs> yeah anyway so they attempt theirs and they were substandard kicks anyway so this other guy the other guy that was with us comes on and he kicks and he just he just gets on no fear at all bang busts out this beautiful sidekick and it's mint and like my coach and, and adam are like oh no we've got to we've got to go and do it again eventually they get back on the wall and do it again but needless to say it took a little bit of coaxing the other bit um we went across the budapest b- uh, bridge in the center of budapest one of the bigger ones um and there was a really good angle that you could get like a, a sidekick across the bay and see like a lot of budapest in the background with it um the problem is this is still a bridge so there's people walking up and down so we probably look like a bunch of muppets doing this but this this is what you do when you're at taekwondo events um and so we we deliver a couple of sidekicks and stuff like that and they're they're okay anyway so uh swanee looks at his and he's like that's no that's not good enough he's like right i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to go for this one there's a gap anyway you've got two ways of doing sidekicks when you're doing for a pose po- photo you can either ping them out as quickly as possible like bang because you, the speed will help you get the elevation and then you just got to get someone really good with the camera and normally you put it on sports mode so it goes and takes loads yeah. of photos machine guns it yeah yeah machine guns it that's the best way to do it <clears throat> and or you can kind of do and it's the, the second one is more the way i do it because i've got quite good control with my kicks um and it means that i can I, that gives the person that's taken the photograph a lot more ability to capture it. You can you can do them kind of not slow, slow, but you you do them with less power, right? So you just kind of place it there in like 
sort of between slow motion and, and, and normal motion. But I find I'm less likely to wobble because if I bang out a kick, I'm, it's going to pull me off and I'm more yeah. likely to wobble. But you're less likely to wobble. So you just kind of, you know, you just place it there. You get the nice shot and they take a few photos. You know, more, more guaranteed to, I find I'm more guaranteed to get it. Better balance for me as well. But because there are people walking up and down, Swanee wanted to really kind of get this one quick, bang, and out there. Now, unfortunately, and, I, and I'm going to go into a bit too much detail, but it, 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 it's done that. Um, we're in normal casual clothes. We're not in dough box, which have a, an extra gusset to give you that flexibility in the trousers to get that kick in. He's in normal jeans. And the way that he describes it is basically the seam, as he did this, and he went really hard because he wanted to do it really quick. As the seam went across, it just it smacked into a per- certain part of the, the male anatomy and then raked across them to the other side. So he Ouch. bangs out this side kick and then just goes, ooh, like this, hunched over <laughs> and drops to the floor Ouch. quicker than you can say. Ouch. <laughs> Liberty gibbet. <laughs> The next person that drops to the floor is me because I am laughing <laughs> so hard because his face is like, you know, you get that face where his eyes just pops out as he's just whacked himself right between the legs with his own jeans oh. trying to bust out this kid. I thought you were going to say, I thought where this was going was that they, they tore. No, no, no. Uh, we, I, have, I, we have had those before, but those, not those ones. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Going back to so, Steve and his skinny jeans. Yeah, yeah, Steve and his skinny yeah. jeans. Yeah, 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 exactly. Well, skinny jeans tend to be quite stretchy. Yeah, that's true. They've got elastine in them. Yeah, they got yeah. So yeah, it was um it was absolutely just one of those just bang, just trying to bust it out as quickly as possible. Needless to say, uh um Swanee Swanee has said that the jeans that he now purchases are a little bit more stretchy <laughs> than those. Have a little bit more give in them if we're ever gonna go out and do a, another <laughs> sidekick. He, he needs to go for those really baggy nineties jeans. <laughs> you know, like the new radicals type. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Get a chain on them as well, rips Yeah, yeah that's the, the one. That's the one. And it'll make a nice sound because they'll be flared as well. So as you as you kick, you get a nice snapping sound too. Oh yeah, yeah. A, a new dobok is the best sound when you've got like a new like crisp dobok and you you punch and it goes and you're like yes, nice, <laughs> so it's great. nice. So, yeah, but I reminded Swanee that 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 event happened and it was only I think it was only yesterday that I posted that. I might, oh no, it would have been Thursday because Thursday was the uh, was it the yeah it was. Um, as an FYI, it is seven years from the Budapest mandate, as much as Swanee wants reminding <laughs> of that. <laughs> and his return is return. His, cool, I re- combined respond and return. <laughs> the same one. That was amazing. Um, his response was, and in return, you've caused me to lose the game. So he's now going to lose the game again when he listens back to this podcast. <laughs> I, all I'm going to say is that's less painful than what he experienced. Yes. Yeah, we'll have to get him to... Crushing his own biscuits. (laughs) Making his own biscuit base. Whilst doing a high kick. (laughs) (laughs) So yeah, I mean, that will segue nicely into into the stuff later, but we've already been going an hour. (laughs) No idea how long this podcast is going to suddenly turn out to be. It's fine. I think think Royal Mail deserved... The airtime that it got, and oh, DPD, yeah. and just gen- yeah. delivery companies generally. General um, tomfoolery. I'm looking at the the notes. Are we doing the the idioms? Yeah, it was still on the idioms. Nice. I've got all the notes for the idioms. I did, yeah. And the one after this, I had no idea what you're on about. <laughs> but we'll come to that. We'll come to it. We'll come to that. So. Uh, idioms. Let's go on to the first one. Bite the bullet. Do you know where this comes from? I think I do. Isn't that biting down on something when you're having a painful procedure? Mm. Yeah. So you've got nothing yeah. else to bite onto. So it's a way of being able to cope with the pain. Yeah. Yeah. It's basically when they didn't have uh, anas- yeah, anesthetic. anesthetic. Yeah. And so, yes. Uh, apparently, in the 1920s during World War, or no, sorry, 1920s during World War One, that's what they had to do for like amputations. They'd give them a bullet to bite on. Apparently, 
Uh, not sure I'd want to do that. I value my teeth. Yeah. And it's difficult enough to get a dentist appointment anyway. <laughs> it's probably easier to get a dentist appointment in the 19, 1910s, yeah, 1920s probably. than it is now these days. It probably was, even in the Somme. <laughs> it's definitely cheaper. It's definitely cheaper. <laughs> and probably actually less queuing. Um, yeah, I think you could get NHS dentists. <laughs> I'm talking a load of old nonsense. I would rather bite down on a stick because you are going to do some damage to your teeth biting. On I would have said like a leather belt or something. Sure, or a leather belt. Be that yeah. would have been the type of thing I would have expected. Yeah. That's that's the type of thing. But yes, bite the bullet to do something a little bit courageous and okay. comes from to do that. The other and in fact, stiff upper, upper lip, which is the same thing, has is actually bought on from the same thing, is to have that solid upper lip as you to, when you bite down. Oh, is it? I didn't realise yeah. the two were linked. Ah. Mm. Yeah. Although, interest, an interesting fact as well, uh, when you speak or anything, your the top part of your jaw doesn't move. It's only the bottom part of your bottom jaw that part, moves. Yeah. Mm. Although now I'm going to try and speak and move the top part. <laughs> it's like... You don't have physically have the muscles to do <laughs> that. I'm going to keep my lower jaw... Here you go. <laughs> I'm so going to talk like that from now. You're going to have to hold it. It's like Chuck Norris when he does press ups, pushes the earth down. <laughs> Similar kind of principle. <laughs> oh, dear. Good old Chuck oh, Norris. Got, you've got to love a good Chuck Norris. <laughs> Chuck Norris joke. Those no the, podcast those is really complete without a Chuck Norris reference, let's face it. No, I mean, obviously not. It's, there's, and there's loads of these, isn't there? It's like. <laughs> Time waits for no man unless that man is Chuck Norris. Chuck Norris. <laughs> I love it. Uh, dear. Is this so- we've we've mentioned this before, but I don't mm. know what the or- origin of it is. It literally makes no sense. What? Chuck Norris one. jokes. No, no. Oh, the next one. Yeah. <laughs> the well, and the Chuck knees. Norris jokes. The bees oh, the bees knees is an interesting bees one. Bees knees. So I did not know this. This this is great, and I'm just going to re- quote say this from bees Wordfilm. Have got knees, for God's sake. No, they do. Have, they do have knees. Do they? Yes, that's where they store pollen. On their knees. Yeah. Okay. Are they technically knees? Yeah. Are they technically female joints? honeybees carry uh, carry pollen in their corbiculae cub- or pollen basket located on the bee's back legs. Okay. So, yeah, they effectively store it on their back legs, and bees have knees. You know, they have <laughs> bendy things. Okay. Yeah. But, um, so the bees' knees apparently came into use during the 1920s um, when the flappers compared almost anything they considered excellent to a part of an animal. It seems that American cartoonist Tad Dorgan is responsible for this particular expression and also for the cat's pyjamas and possibly for hot dog. Um, so just around the 1920s, there was a fad that like it, it means the height of excellence, but they used to just compare things to animals. Okay. Um, he also coined a number of the other expressions that didn't stick, which some of these are great. The canary's tusks, the fleas eyebrows, and other sub- superlatives from the period include the sardine's whiskers, the eel's ankle, and the clam's garter. Some of those I've never heard. The flea's eyebrows was the one that got, got me. Flea's <laughs> eyebrows, we're going to have to use that. Oh, that's brilliant. That's the flea's <laughs> eyebrows. According to The Guardian, some believe that the bee's knees derives from the shortening of the be-all and, and the end-all of everything, which was shortened to the bees and the ease and thus to the bee's knees. While oh, another okay. clown, another camp believes it derives, it's the business. Which, again, the, it's the business, as meaning that is the absolute business, the height of excellence. It's the busy busyness is quite often how business is pronounced i i admitted that i still we whenever i'm writing wednesday i still go wednesday because that's, yeah, yeah. that's the only way to spell it um so yeah um that is the that is the way that's where the bees knees have got like a couple of different ones so whether that was <coughs> coined by an american uh, in the early wand um or whether it's come from the corruption of business um, 
when they are the duff nuts. <laughs> duff nuts. The duff nuts. But it also maybe could connect to the fact that the bee's knees is where the valuable pollen is carried. So it's kind of a, uh, I think it's a cross between um, like the bees, like the animal kind of comparison and uh, a bit of the it's the business kind of corruption. There is like a British version of it, isn't it? It's the dogs. Yeah, <laughs> the dogs. Yeah. The mutts. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Loads of them. But yeah, it just it just seemed to go on. So our challenge is in the next month is to try and use the fleas eyebrows, <laughs> <laughs> <Flea's> eyebrows. <laughs> in a in a meeting at work. <laughs> do it. You need to get it in one of the Wednesdays. I'm gonna calls. do it in our, I'm gonna do it in the call that we share, Jerry. <laughs> yes. Oh yes. <laughs> Let's do that. If I manage to get it in, do you're it. gonna break. <laughs> Do it. We. What was the other one that we said we were going to... We were talking to Yevgeny. We, we didn't use it. It was an idiom. Oh, it was... We a, haven't used um, it yet. Hang on, I haven't got the previous podcasts. We said, oh, um, we'll, we'll um, definitely have to crack that one open. Yevgeny was up September, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. I'm just opening it now. Um... Oh, I mean, it could be to show where the crayfish is wintering. That's about the, the one. Move. A white crow instead of a black sheep. No, it's a to paint the, the, a pig on some. It was a crayfish one to show yeah. where the. That'll teach him a lesson. That'll teach him. Show where the crayfish is wintering. A squeezed lemon. <laughs> a squeezed lemon is pretty much how we how we feel. Or how I felt before we started this podcast. Man, I was a squeezed lemon. <laughs> that I can get in easy. <laughs> Oh, that's brilliant. Uh, so, in fact, I could get that one in, I reckon, first line on, on our yeah. call this week. Yeah, I think. <laughs> I'm an absolute squeezed lemon. <laughs> that's how I'm starting off the week, as a squeezed lemon. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> squeezed lemon. <laughs> Dom's gone. We've lost him. <laughs> squeezed lemon. Oh, dear. <laughs> to buy a cat in a sack. <laughs> Oh, yeah, brilliant. The crayfish one. <laughs> That's what gets me, the crayfish. That'll teach him a lesson where the crayfish is, win- is wintering. To I'd show to where just, the crayfish is wintering. I'd just love to just casually say it. And someone says, yeah, do you know what? That serves him right. And you go, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That'll show where the crayfish That'll is show wintering. Where the crayfish is wintering. And then just hang up. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Dear. That is amazing. Oh dear. Right, next next idiom. Donkey's ears. Oh, yeah. This one's great. I like this one. It's quite a simple one as well. Um so Donkey's Years actually comes from the fact that there was a novel where somebody was asking about it because he just basically misheard somebody. Because it should be Donkey's Ears to describe oh, something. Because re- donkeys have right? donkeys have quite long ears. Okay. And he was like, Oh yeah, like as long as the donkey's ears. And somebody went, Donkey's ears? basically um and that's just basically how the phrase is to refer to something that's a long time because donkeys have quite so that quite literally time. came out by accident and have, we're using yeah. the accidental phrase of course always <laughs> oh my god that's brilliant it's actually a pun on donkey's ears to represent a long time and fell into place in the 1900s funny how that stuck mm. i do find it fascinating what gets picked up and what people keep uh, going language the language in english is is i love I, well actually i imagine it's the same in any language because um and how words can be reused recently so the big thing i always love is like um is it mirror uh most recent words added oops Oh, to the, added to the dictionary. dictionary right because they have to they they add in new things because I was going to say Generation Z add like all these new things, but actually it's probably been the same since the beginning of time. Each generation just introduces us new things. Um, so, uh, like things like trauma dumping, pink washing. Uh, uh, let's see if I can find something. Pink Anti fat is a pa- has been added in. Um, what the hell is pink washing? I'm just, yeah. I've just. 
I can't move on from dictionary.com. Here are new full words that are, are out. Um, so NIL, name, image, likeness, although it is, is a one. Or Blur's Day, a day not easily dis- distinguishable from other days or the phenomenon of days running together. Like, and, you know, made up names are meant to capture the sameness vibe of busy lives and work. Similar terms include Who's Day and Wednesday. <laughs> That's great. I love those. Okay. Uh, so, you know, so Blur's Day, you know, um, different things like that. Um, I think I'm going to start using that, Blur's Day. Greenwashing. What's an t- incident of practice of promoting or affiliating a brand campaign mission with environmentalism ah. as applying to divide attention from politics and activities that are in fact anti-environmentalist. I've heard that. I've heard yeah. that. But what's pink washing? Pink washing? Did I say pink washing? Yeah, you said pink washing. Oh, was that on a different? Which just automatically oh, makes me think of accidentally putting in a red sock. I would imagine <laughs> well, that that doesn't happen and then these that days. A pink wash. I, I've I've always. Said that, like, you're going to probably people are going to cringe. I don't separate whites and darks. They all just go in the same washing machine on a cold wash. 30 degrees. And bearing in mind that the dough box for Taekwondo is white. I've never had any problems. Oh my God. Hmm. All, well, all well, martial art pajamas are white, aren't they? They are. Yeah. And you want to keep them that way, really. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, there's there's loads of... Like, GPT has been added to the um, oh, I didn't know what it stands for. That's interesting. GPT has been added to the dictionary. Do you know what it stands for? GPT. Okay. Golf, no. Papa, Tango. Generative pre-trained transformer. Okay. Hmm. The only, the only like, chatbot I recognise is Chat Stevie T. Can chat we, Stevie T. Chat Can we just Stevie say... T. A complete diver- we completely diversion away from idioms. What a fantastic episode that we had I with Chat Stevie T last day. It was a great episode. Got so we much good so feedback much, on it. So much good feedback. And we send anybody that sent good feedback and said that Steve was brilliant. Um, we know what he can be like in a work environment. And sometimes he's a little bit on PC and even he would admit that himself. But he was, I mean, it was fabulous. The insights brilliant. that he had. We've had so many positive feedback. We're, we're going to get him back on, definitely. Um, we might also try and get him back on with Hooper. Uh, and then just yeah, that's me right. and you oh, can just sit back that. on the podcast and write <laughs> yeah, itself, I think. Light the blue touch paper and off they go. <laughs> yeah, yeet. Yes. So, but also coming back to the addition of things, it's also how different generations see things as as good. Like, so uh, see different, use different words in context. So if I said, oh, that's sick. You know that that's yeah. a good thing. That's a really yeah. good thing, right? But that was, I think that was probably the generation before me that kind of introduced that. But if he said, oh, let him cook. What does that mean? To let somebody cook. To let them stew on something. No, it actually means let them, just let them go and do their thing. Let them go and be good. Let them go and be amazing. Oh, really? Um, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, uh, I'm pretty sure that's what, let him cook. Uh, let him cook. Is a slang term or catchphrase used as a call out to give someone that the space to plot, strategize, strategize or hone their craft. Um, Just let them cook. Yeah. Okay. Apparently, this actually comes from Toy Story. <laughs> Does it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, oh, no, actually, sorry. The origin is commonly understood from the original cat, let that boy cook and was coined by rapper Little B. Uh, 2010, but it gets picked up like a a little while later, uh, you know, and it's it's just you know let them do their thing, let them go and be awesome, so to speak. Interesting. Um, but it's amazing how like different ones can kind of do that. Um, you know, it, it's it and how different generations kind of do that. And I suppose the 1900s they picked donkeys' ears. And- didn't want to focus on cooking i suppose donkey's years i just love the fact that it's pretty much everybody knows the expression well how long does that take oh it's taken donkey's years you just don't think about it you just say it yeah whereas if you'd say oh that that's going to take donkey's years it doesn't sound right but it's similar to cockney rhyming slang isn't it i suppose as well yeah it is yeah, that's the bubble. 
<laughs> That's going to give him the bubble. <laughs> I love, I love Cockney rhyming slang. I love, a lot I just it. love it, and I love trying to explain Cockney rhyming slang to somebody that doesn't understand Cockney rhyming yeah. slang just to see their expression. <laughs> and they're like, what? We should Especially, do it with Evgeny. Yeah, I, I like the Cockney rhyming slang where it's sort of two steps removed. Right. Okay. So, for example. Um, so you've heard the expression, oh, yeah, you can take that and you can, you know, that, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know, this isn't PC. <laughs> um, like, Put it in you, and we can take it out well, if need be. <laughs> well, okay, so like we say, oh, um, yeah, that, that gave him a right kick up the Aris. Yeah. Aristotle, bottle, mm. bottle and mm. glass. Glass. <laughs> It, it's just so. You don't like, think that about it. Like go, three steps removed. That's like yeah. I mean, that's like yeah. Inception. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. Yeah, yeah. Because I didn't know until yeah. I started actually reading up about Cockney rhyming slang. I was like, oh yeah, Harris. Because the rest yeah. of it's just straightforward, isn't it? You just say, oh, you know, barnet. Oh, I see you got your barnet snipped. Yeah, that, that's go yeah. hairdo. Yeah, yeah. Oh, what was the one that I heard? I thought was brilliant. There was one I heard the other day that was absolutely brilliant. I was like, but then you have got traditional that. Cockney rhyming slang and then modern Cockney rhyming slang. Uh, I Cause... would just say that Cockney rhyming slang just addresses to the ages. That, yes, yeah, it does. I suppose you know somebody mm. says, "Oh, let's go for some Britneys." Do you fancy going to the, down to the pub? Mm. Have a couple of Britneys. <laughs> <laughs> I, you have to get explain the Britneys. I seem to beers. Yeah, Britney Spears beers. Oh, um, okay. Yeah. Oh, see, so you have to kind of extend it but to yeah. figure out what it you actually could say, means. Let's go for a couple of donkeys. <laughs> you can start mixing up Cockney rhyming slang with idioms. Fancy oh, there is a word of... for that. Is there? There is a word for that when you cross pollinate, pollinate. phrases. Well, by your knees. <laughs> Something like that. So if you take a phrase like, um, uh, let's do mixing... Oops, phrases starts with the PH. By the way, I'm going to do something Malifor. unorthodox. A what? Manatee. Malifor. A Malifor. <laughs> Malifor. For example, you hit the nail right on the nose. Oh, very good. <laughs> very good. The one that gets We'll me... burn that bridge when we come to oh, it. Oh, very good. <laughs> That's what oh, I want to use I like at work. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> oh, dear. She really stuck her neck out on a limb. <laughs> I like that we'll burn that bridge when we come to it. That's yeah, genius. Manifold. Dom, that is genius. <laughs> I'm going to have to start using that one. Oh, there's loads. There's loads. He's between a rock and the deep blue sea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll burn that bridge when we come to it. That's, that's, that's my brilliant. One. I that love it. Brilliant. I'm going to do right, something very man. unorthodox, by the way. I'm oh, just going to go off then. camera for a second. Oh, dear. So, I'm going to have one of these. Because I'm hungry and I haven't eaten yet. What is it? Oh. They are liqueur chocolates. Ugh. But filled oh, with advocat of all things. Advocat? <laughs> yeah. Which is like alcoholic eggnog. <laughs> I could tell a story from my childhood if you fancy another Dom story. We'll yeah, go for round number three. <laughs> so, um, my uh, I was never went abroad on holiday. Often when I was when I was younger, we used to always go like individual day outs. So, like to Legoland, and then to not normally much bigger than that. But when I was quite young, so it must have been three or four, maybe five, sort of that sort of age. We went to um, <laughs> went to Cadbury's World, which, as a five year old, you're like, yes, love Cadbury's World. For, yeah, I don't know if for people that haven't been, Cad- Cadbury's World is you know just where they make chocolate, right? It's, it's up in is it in Birmingham? It is. Yeah, it's just Birmingham. outside. Well, yeah, I say just outside. It's about five miles from the town centre. Yeah, where is it? Yeah. Uh, Linden Road, Birmingham. 
da, 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 da. is it easy to get to? Yeah, it's just south of Birmingham. South of Birmingham. So you kind of up to the M5, onto the A38, and then across to it. Fairly easy to get to. Um, actually, that's probably not too far from me. Only 21 quid to get in. Sweet. Did not know that. Maybe I'll do that. Um, but anyway, I went as a young child. All fine. I mean, you know, I, you say it's like a, a, a kid in a sweet shop. Well, you, you're in a chocolate making factory. So if we're going to use more idioms there, I was a kid in a sweet shop, li- almost quite literally. And did you have the and, melted chocolate as well? Like we could yeah, get the into the, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Lo- loads of things. Anyway. So good. We went around the tour. We were going around the tour in the factory, and they would get you know they give you free bits of chocolate the whole way round. You easily gain about six kilos just by <laughs> walking into the place and sniffing too hard. Um, and they gave us a liqueur one, and I'm five, so I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah give it to me. And my um, my dad's like, you won't like it. You will not like it. But I'm like, no, 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 give it, give it, give it, give it. So I went. <laughs> so <laughs> my dad, and this is just to show how gross children are, including myself. My dad went, okay, fine. Gave me the chocolate. I went, oh, I don't like that. And grabbed the wrist of my dad's hand, oh, like, no. pulled it back and just spat it into his hand. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> and he, so he stood there with a liqueur. And obviously as a parent, you just go, oh, whatever. No. And just put that, <laughs> put that in. Like a slightly chewed liqueur that's been spat oh. out by your own child. <laughs> what liqueur was it? Do you remember? I don't know if I'm totally honest, but it was a liqueur. liqueur you your dad. I want to know. Yeah. Mm. I bet it wasn't Advocat. I don't know what it would have been. What would it have been? Like, what would it have been? I wonder if it's... You're going to have to save me from myself. <laughs> liqueur. Oh, so good. It just says it's a cream liqueur. Well, I don't can't. Yeah, it's lovely. I don't know. Look, mm, look, they do a liqueur hot chocolate, adults only, apparently. <laughs> mm, nice. <laughs> Two tea, oh no, this is a thing. Amaretto, orange liqueur, brandy, rum, or whiskey can be any. So it's your choice. Here we go. So by the way, Advocat. Mm. For those of you who don't know, or Advocat in bottle is a traditional Dutch alcoholic beverage made from, <laughs> brace yourself, Dom, eggs. Is it why it tastes like eggnog? Eggs, sugar, mm. and brandy. Ooh. The rich and creamy drink has a smooth custard-like consistency. It's a smooth. Are you going to do your, your, the movie voice for smooth? Smooth. It's a smooth <laughs> custard-like yeah, consistency. In a world <laughs> where you have rich and creamy... <laughs> <laughs> smooth custard like consistency oh, typical so alcohol nice. content is generally between 14 and 20 percent there you go 14 and 20 percent yeah and that's yeah. all wrapped up in a chocolate shell it's lovely <laughs> we wrap that up like a tortilla and oh, it's lovely it's let's so burrito good. this <laughs> let's burrito this i always say that on calls no one questions it Actually, some of the- <laughs> <laughs> this is the thing, right? This is this is why I'm pretty convinced. But this, these idioms, I'm pretty convinced. Like all of these, especially the office ones, you could say. And I reckon I could say in a call, "We'll burn that bridge when we get there," and nobody would bat an eyelid. No, because because people are probably only concentrating about five percent of the time because ninety nine percent of the meetings that we go to yeah, are but- a complete waste of time. <laughs> but I reckon people will then start using it. There is a phrase. Yeah, they will. Well, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this. Again, it's not very PC. Is it? I don't mm. know. It's a bit rude. But I use it all What's the it? time. You know, because you've heard it loads of times. So, Oh, it's not fringe, is it? <laughs> no, 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 no. It's the other one. I'll give you a clue. So the letters, it's two words. Letters H-O. Mm. And somebody, no, <laughs> somebody said it casually on a call yeah. to me. Mm. And I thought, I've said it so many times that now other people are using it casually without even thinking. Oh, no, I'm awful. Like, I'm a complete sheep. I'm an absolute (laughs) sheep, right? Because I will pick up phrases from other people and use them. So I now go into calls and use what the actual fringe. <laughs> what is, I know. Right? <laughs> but have you used the other one, though, with the HO? I can't think what it is. I can't so think what it is. You're I'm going to say it. it. You might have to bleep yeah. it. I'll but it was it so too. funny. It was, it was one of the guys... Um, in, in engineering and he said yeah i was talking to so-and-so and and yeah he's just he's got a hard-on for 
Oh yes, 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 yes. I know what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've seen. I heard that one. <laughs> yeah, and, but, but that one's great. I mean, that one's a really good one because, like, people do get overexcited about things that just don't need to get <laughs> yeah. overexcited about. Yeah, and that really conveys it really well. But but the thing is, he just said it so casually. He didn't even yeah. flinch, and then just carried on talking like it was a perfectly normal thing to say. Yeah. And all that but the thing is, right? I, I don't see that as rude. I think that portrays a really good. <laughs> analogy for somebody getting overexcited you're like oh. flipping not, and and yeah and yes no i think i think that's a really good one <laughs> yeah I, I i but i also i pick up phrases from everybody I, uh like and it's really annoying because some of the phrases that i've that i've picked up from other people i'm like oh, why do i keep saying that why why am i suddenly doing that because you just kind of just, I just embrace it but i'm absolute sheep I'm absolute sheep <laughs> Power right, to last the sheep. <laughs> yeah, power to the sheep. Well, speaking of sheep, let's go to its distant cousin, Yaks. That's very true. <laughs> let's let's talk about yak shaving. So I'm actually going to share my screen because I'm going to. Have you seen the Malcolm in the Middle? I watched uh, the epi- not the episode, but I watched the. Have you seen this, you the said, clip? Yeah. So I'm going to share the clip now. Uh, let's do screen. Let's do that. One. What you're going to share the? Oh. Okay, sorry. Just I'm this. I'm marveling at what what we can actually do on this platform. So you're going to share this and people are going to be able to see this and hear yeah, yeah. it. I hope so. Oh, wow. Can you see it? It's not loading it's for me. Not, it's saying actual recording is high quality and there's a blank screen and three dots are going across. Uh, rude. Oh, rude. Or, uh, screen. What are you sharing? YouTube or? I'm going to reveal my notes now. There you go. You should see it now. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So. like i'm doing brilliant it's that constant yes. distraction along mm. that whole process oh that's that's loose that's squeaking but but that is the definition of yak shaving uh end up doing totally unrelated things to what you're trying to do to accomplish the initial so he's trying to replace the light bulb but he's got to the point where he's currently trying to fix the car so that he can go out to get some wd-40 to then repair the squeak in the drawer to then use the screwdriver that was in the drawer to repair the cupboard to then uh, take the light bulb and replace the light, the light bulb. It's genius. It's genius. It's a lack shaver. And it's actually a common um, uh, programming thing because it'd be like, right, to, we need to deliver, we need to change the button on the website to be green instead of pink, for example. Right, two RGB colors. But but to do that, I need to be, I need to clone the repository. Then I need to get administrator rights to be able to build and deploy the application. Then I need to go into the code, re- go into the code, and you suddenly realize it's a complete mess. So if you change it in one place, the, it will only change it in one place rather than everywhere. So then you refactor the code so that you pull the button so it's in one place, and then you finally go and deploy that. So when people go, so whenever somebody goes to an engineer and goes. You've just got to change the color on that the, what the button <laughs> yeah. wants. Well, no, you don't. This is the process. This is the yak shaving yeah. process I've, I do to actually get to that point and why it's really important that you listen to your engineers when they say, it's going to take me this long. Just because what you see on the outside and perceive as really easy is not necessarily easy. Because of the yak. Because of the yak. That needs a shave. Absolutely. But that is the, the yak shaving. That is the... I um, love that expression. I remember when you introduced me to it, I was like, what? <laughs> and then you explained it. And then I watched that clip. It's genius. I yeah. think it's genius. The interesting question now would be, would you class what Hal was doing as actual yak shaving? Or would you just class that as distraction? Because he could have easily replaced the light bulb without fixing the the yeah the cupboard. That, that was actually distraction, I think. 
more than the act showed him. Yeah. Because and what's that? that it was that's too far removed. Associated. It was too far removed. Yeah. The stuff he was doing was too far removed from, yeah. from changing the bowl. Yeah. Yeah, like, like in programming, it's like for me to actually physically yeah. change that button, I need to clone yeah, the repository. Exactly. So I need to do these bunch. So that's more of the definition. In fact, that... That clip, the reason why I showed that clip, it's, it's, a good, it's a good example of kind of showing a little bit of what yak shaving is to a non-engineer yeah. uh, or a non-developer, I should say. <clears throat> but what I find interesting about it is actually I think it's more relevant to the current, like what I'm going to refer to as the ADHD like pandemic where um, like we're so much more easily distracted by things yeah. because we swipe and do things like that. And there's a lot of undiagnosed ADHD, which just seems to be you know, which is coming to the forefront recently. Um, and yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a really interesting kind of way to, um, is it yak shaving? Is it ADHD? It, it kind of context is quite, quite important, I think, between the two. Yeah, I agree. Um, so yeah, but yeah, very, very good. Um, yak shaving. And right, we've a, got... If I'm not mistaken, that's the first time we've done a clip. Uh, no, uh, it's not the first. No, it's no. not the first time I've shared my screen because I shared my screen when we did a. Oh um, no, we did the pizza. We did the pizza thing with Hooper. With Hooper, yeah, you're right. Yes, it's not the first time I've shared my screen, but it's the first time, and and I have inserted clips in the post edit. Yes, you have yeah. before. Yeah, so yeah. when we were talking about the Star Wars sounds with Hooper, yes, that was that like the Hooper episode was the one that I like. Like just flex. I had loads of time, so I flexed my editing skills, so to speak. Just saw Brilliant. what I could do, and so I put in clips of like you know the bombs from Star Wars or the the lightsaber yeah, sounds because yeah. I still like. Again, I'm sat at my table. I'm sat at my table in the field. Star Wars has the best sounds. Not necessarily the best star soundtrack, although it's up there, but it has the best sound like design um, of any film franchise convince me otherwise and i think you'll fail i can't think of anything better i can't either i agree you've got iconic sounds iconic sounds of chewbacca the lightsaber yeah uh tie fighters they make a very mm. distinct sound yeah yeah all of it all, like, of, all, it. all of the bullets just, oh, I just love yeah. Star Wars. and the use of the absence of noise as well as noise being yeah. there so the use of silence which you don't normally get in films i yeah. think is great and then you get that like i call it like the 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 like 1990s powerpoint cut in films where they just like it literally just like fades out the circle or it's just a just a literal cut in the film and it's very like 1990s powerpoint design type thing <laughs> which i think is great <laughs> those 90 powerpoint transitions yeah yeah the yeah, transitions yeah. yeah yeah the transitions <laughs> love it right um new section that i wanted to introduce and Purely because I just, uh, the thing that just got to me, I was just thinking of you and the Benedict Cumberbatch puns. <laughs> <laughs> like, Periwinkle c- c- Cumberbatch. Don't, 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 don't. <laughs> we get me started again. I love it. It keeps giving. Um, and especially with some of the future podcasts <clears throat> that we want to do with some of our guests, I wanted to introduce a bit more uh, joviality to our things as we've had a few serious ones. Um, and it's just an opportunity for us to try and make each other laugh with the best puns that we come up come up with. And it's totally stolen from a couple of other podcasts that I've started watching. Uh, so there's a the Yeah Mad podcast and the We Got the Chocolates, which I absolutely love. Um, unfortunately, I don't think we can do it quite as much justice because I think some of these sound better in an Australian accent, and they're both Australian. So oh, I know the yes. No, as soon as you said that, yeah, I know the the ones yeah. you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah. So we're gonna go for and totally stolen names for a new fridge slash freezer, and you're gonna have to. <laughs> so you've written yours on the on the additional notes, but I've kept mine secret so I can read mine out and see your reaction. Are we gonna? <laughs> All right, go on. Are we gonna do? Are we gonna do one each. One, no, one for yours, one. and then one I'll one. do one. Yeah. Yeah. So the first one, if the fridge is new and hasn't been touched, I've gone for frigid. <laughs> Jeez. You see, I didn't even know where we were going with this, so I don't even know if I've done any of this right. Yeah, some of yours are great. <laughs> Mr. Freeze. Yeah. And that's the obvious one for Batman. Obvious one. But I was, so my mind immediately went to ice cream vans. 
Okay. And and the variations of like freeze and yes. whippy and things yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I mean, I've got other ones because I've got like, you know, I could go for Bear Chills. Oh, <laughs> Bear Chills. I don't even think that's my best one. Oh, that's brilliant. Um, okay, so the, <laughs> I did. I see what you did there. <laughs> you did there. That's good. That's great. Uh, similar to my previous one, Ben Chiller. <laughs> oh, very good. Very good. I, I wasn't very imaginative with this one, but chill the fringe out. Chill the fringe out is great. Yeah, I quite that. like that. Chill the fringe <laughs> yeah, I out. Like... Um, Whoopi Coldberg. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's my favourite so far. Um, <laughs> nice and freezy. Freezy. Nice and freezy. Nice and freezy. <laughs> that's great. Uh, Morgan Friesman. Oh, very good. <laughs> very good. Um, freezy does it. Freezy, that's good. Um, uh, frigid spinner. That was a bit of a stretch. (laughs) That was a bit more of a stretch. This one, because I just ran out of ideas. I just thought, well, if you're going to call the fridge anything, cool runnings. Cool runnings. It's a great film, by the way. Brilliant film. Love it. We were discussing. Uh, taekwondo um, films that you must see as a t- as as a, to be on our squad um, because uh, what was the film? There is a film that Swanee said that he hasn't seen, and I was horrified that he hadn't seen it. Not Predator. Oh, Rocky. Rocky has not seen. Rocky. Not seen what? Rocky as a martial artist. He's not seen any of the Rockies. So Swanee, get on it. There's only one film I would say that was more shocking if he hasn't seen it. Mm. is Enter the Dragon. Yeah, that would be quite shocking. Be Tell quite me shocking. he's seen the, Enter the Dragon. Tell me I've you've seen Enter know. the Dragon. I've seen Enter the Dragon, yeah. yes. I've seen Enter the Dragon. Um, the one that we we like to use, um, which is a Taekwondo-based film, is Best of the Best. It's a bit of a niche film that not many people have seen, apart from those who've seen Taekwondo. It? But best of, best of the Best is a good question. Um, is it a never... martial arts film? Yeah, it's a martial arts film. It's very... No, it's not 1980s. Van Damme, no. Um, so Alex Grady, Tommy Lee, Travis Brickley, Sonny Grasso. Uh, oh no, those. Sorry, those are the character character names. Sorry, um, Eric Roberts, Philip Ree, Chris oh. Penn, David Agresta, James L. Jones is coach. Coach. Yes. Coach oh my God! I remember this. I haven't seen this. Wow. Oh, it's so 1980s cheese, but it's great, yeah. Do you know, so... 1989. You probably already know this, but I will say this. Mm. Eric Roberts is the brother of Julia Roberts. Did you know that? I did not. Yeah, no, yes, I did know that. Yes, I did. And unless somebody right. tells you... So at the point when somebody tells you, you go, oh, yeah, because you yeah, sort of yeah, see yeah. the similarities. Yes. Uh but it's based on Philip Ree um, events in his real life. Okay. He plays Tommy Lee. Uh, but yeah, best of the best. Cheesy AF, but great film. No, it is um, a great yeah, film. Yeah, it is a great there's film. There's a bunch of them. There's a bunch of them that like that are films that we sort of say as martial artists. And one of those is um, Cool Runnings, which is weirdly Cool Runnings. Um, and I said, I said, I think I said this. Uh, this was back. Oh, this was at the weekend when we were on a on a thing and we were walking through London. No, not London. We were we we're between exactly slap bang between Brighton and London. Um, we were sort of talking about um, c- the thing I like about Cool Runnings is it's not like yay they get to the end and they win the gold. Mm. They still come last, and I like that about that yeah. film. That's what I like about Cool Runnings. It's not a I, not a I'm going to win um, type thing, uh, which I think is absolutely brilliant. Well, I'm going to say. I love that film. And in fact, John Candy, I loved all of the John Candy films. So mm. I'm going to do this. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Rest in peace, <laughs> Mr. Candy. Um, my last pun, uh, just to keep it, finish it back round with, with Benedict, <laughs> is uh, Benedict Coldbatch. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think it would be. <laughs> Whoopi Coldberg. Whoopi really Coldberg, that got me. <laughs> I like that. 
That's your favourite. <laughs> Oh dear! But they were—they had the ones I stole this from um, from We Got the Chocolates. They had things like Sydney Harbour Fridge. Oh, very good. <laughs> oh, Don, we've got to like... do this. We got to. Do... This has got to be a regular because this is fun. Yeah, yeah, this yeah, is going to be regular. It. This is going to be regular. I love it. Um, as we get guests on, we'll get them to bring their best yeah. like, puns and research because yeah. some really good oh, ones. This is hilarious. Um, the other thing that I want to introduce eventually to the podcast, especially as we get more guests on, is um a lot of try not to laughs because we know we love yeah. a good dad joke we love a great dad <laughs> joke and i think that's going to be some impressive things to do brilliant so topical event it's the big one it is the big one this it's a, big it's going to be a bit of a, a dom's story some podcast i realize i've said a lot <laughs> i feel a bit guilty no, don't feel guilty this is good this has just been your entertainment for an hour and 45 minutes. I'm just going to sit back. Road. I'm kicking back this time. Sit just back relax. and relax. Yes. Um, no, but you've got questions for me anyway. I can't relax too much because you you said you've got... Well, I haven't got questions for you. It's more like, is there any more that you want... When I go oh, through this, like is there any to, more that you yeah. want me to go through? Um, I've actually got to switch notes, Pat, because I had to write some some other notes. <laughs> Thank you for separating out the other bits. Yes. Ah, so whether we do that section, because some of those are great, I might move them to the next time because those poignant questions I, are amazing. I agree. And our podcast could end up being a four hour one today at the rate it we're could going. Be. It could be. Um, but those are like exactly what I want. I want more of those questions. I want more, 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 more. <laughs> um, so, yes. Um, so, this one is going to be a bit of a story for me. And I think. Um, one of the reasons actually why we don't have a guest, although it was trying to try and organize it, but it's something I wanted to talk about on the podcast because it's going to be the first time I'm kind of putting it out on the internet, so to speak. And although this doesn't get released to the 1st of November, it's technically three days too early. I need to, I need it to be released on the 5th because I'm competing um, on the on the 4th. But um, for those who don't, oh, I talk about it a lot uh, and we talk about it with Adam. For those that don't know, I obviously do Taekwondo. Um, and oh, it must be three weeks now. Yes, because it was the thirtieth. Bang on three weeks ago, um, I was successful in passing my fourth degree grading. Yay. Congratulations! Thank you very much. Really, um, that's amazing. Yeah, it's and <clears throat> for those that don't know anything about Taekwondo, um, I go, I'll go into a brief history. But there could be. I'm gonna try and ke- I'm gonna try and keep my tangents. To- <laughs> I'm not gonna try me. Yeah, this is this is gonna try and go dead straight. We're not gonna go the River Nile here. It's gonna be straight as, straight as a straight as a boomerang probably. But <laughs> try not to gnarl this. Um, so the form of Taekwondo that I do is ITF Taekwondo, uh, not the WT Taekwondo. So the WT Taekwondo is what you see at the Olympics, uh, split off in 1967. Um, but 1955, when Taekwondo was formed, what I do is what General Che, who, invent- who was the founder of Taekwondo, wanted Taekwondo to be. So um, our patterns look very different to um, the Pumse that they call them in the WT. Um, it's more akin to karate. In fact, the first um, kata in karate and the first in Shotokan karate and the first tool, T-U-L, in Tull in ITF Taekwondo are almost identical. There's actually very little. Yeah, they're very, they're very, very, very similar. I believe it's Shotokan. I could be wrong on that. Um, and our sparring is, as I said earlier, is very akin to kickboxing. So it's not the kind of very leggy, kicky, kind of fast, quick, lots of spins. It is more like you've got like gloves on rather than like just mitts. Um, which means punching is more akin. And if you compare us to like the WACO, which is the Kickboxing Association, it's very, very similar. And our really good like international sparers will quite often win. So um, I'm just trying to think who won the world championships this year that I know. I think it was, oh God, who won that? Was it, it might've been Timothy Boss, but I, he competed internationally and is meddled at wacko as well so they're very good um and you kind of cross pollinate um but yeah so uh my f- and then your belts obviously you've got so our belts go white white yellow green blue red black but you have a stage in between so you become a white belt and then you get a yellow stripe down the middle so you've got a belt if you hold your belt lengthways you get a stripe all the way through the middle of it 
um, sometimes people do them as like just on the end, on the tips, um, but very, very rarely. Uh, but that depends on the organization less like the ITF style. Um, so, you know, it'd be like you'd have a white belt, then you have a white belt with a yellow stripe, then you have a yellow belt and you have a yellow belt with a green stripe, etc. through to, you know, you keep your previous color and you get the stripe of the next one that you're going to. So nine grades at color belt. And then you grade for your first degree. Um, and so you get your, you get a black belt, usually embroidered with your name and your grade on it. Um, and you go, uh, it goes first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, first second third fourth fifth sixth seventh eighth and ninth um and you gain different titles it goes up to ninth and you grade different titles and and like there's different peaks so i'm really going i'm going quite in depth into taekwondo a because i think it's brilliant and i think everyone should do it but b also because it sets a little bit of context for like the next few like stages so um and you get your numbers they're normally in roman numerals so you know one two eyes three eyes an iv v vi vii uh viii i x x uh no i x nine sorry sorry um <clears throat> and then there's different titles that comes with it so first to third degree um you are called a bosabum um so you are a black belt essentially um fourth to sixth you become a sabum um so you become a senior black belt and from uh, seventh, so seventh and eighth is Saiyan, which is master. And I don't actually know what the Korean is um, for grandmaster. So grandmaster being a ninth. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, so the, the big thing, if I go to ITF dash TKD, where's it that? Ah, so sorry. If to the organization, if you ever want to see the organization that I am part of from a thing, it's ITF tkd.sport um, and that is the international taekwondo federation that i am on um, and you can see if you go into members and affiliated members you will see from fourth degree and above so in total within the organization that i am on so if i search by ninth there's a database there are 51 total grandmasters in the entire organization so it, it obviously does across that. the world obviously uh, yeah, across the yeah. world. If I then sort that, so as a note, I am under in, we are under England because we split England, Wales, Scotland right. as separate things. We have separate bodies for each of those. So there are two within ITF: uh, Grandmaster Narditsi and Grandmaster Ellis. Um, and you can you can you know do that. Um, I, I like to point out that although I have now graded to fourth, I've not I'm not there yet. I'm not in the list of fourth degrees in England, of which there are currently 53, um, because um, it, you have to get your certification and <clears throat> pay for your certification um, to get to actually be put onto that board. But that's currently in progress. So yeah, that's just to highlight just a little bit of what what it's about. And obviously for me, like going to fourth degree is kind of the peak. Right, so I've hit my peak. So to be in, in theory, you kind of trundle down from here. Um, so there's another three patterns at fourth degree, but you only have two at fifth and one at sixth, and there are no additional patterns beyond that. Um, and because of the age limits, and com so competition-wise, in, com in a World Cup or World Championships, the um, the the categories are: you have a first degrees compete, at first degrees, second degrees compete, at second degrees, third degrees compete, at third degrees, and then it's fourth to sixth. So as soon as you go over sixth degree and become a master, you cannot compete. Um, and fourth to sixth, all do the fourth degree patterns only. Um, Yonge, Oji, and Mumu. So yeah, just a little bit of context around that, just to kind of explain. So I have now graded to my fourth, so I now have three new patterns to learn and etc. etc. Et cetera. Um, and split into kind of like what I did for the grading um, you have a bit on the floor, which generally is your patterns, your line work, which is basically a bunch of kicks, um, your set sparring. Um, they call it set sparring, but what that normally actually is like close to akin to self-defense. So somebody's swinging a punch at you. Your free sparring, so pads on, punch each other in the face. Great fun. Then on that. Um, theory, which they ask you a bunch. You can ask you anything from like the meaning of this pattern, the meaning of this grade, tell us about the history, or they might ask you questions, talk about yourself. Generally, as you get higher, you're you're more akin to talk about your own philosophies and bits and pieces like that. 
then you do some braking, which I think officially now this this might be slight scar on there still now where I broke. Um, but the bruising now has officially gone, which is Good. nice. Um, because that was there for like two and a half weeks. <laughs> it's just quite painful. Um, but yeah, braking. So, um, I've told people it's wood, but actually it's we call them boards. So they're plastic boards mm. that like have a specific line, and then a white board is like one. A red board is a 1.5 and a black board is a two. So a black board is the same as two white boards in theory. Right. And you have to, so you have to be accurate. Whereas wood, you can hit anywhere. And as long as you hit it hard enough, it'll break. But if you hit, don't, if you hit above the, the line, it doesn't move. Yeah. It's like hitting a solid wall. Um, and then we have what we term as our spirit test, which is like exercising really hard. So spoiling bits of the grading, but it's the same as every grading within the ITF. So yeah, that's what I've just been through. So I was successful in passing. Oh, and you also have an essay and appraisal. I'm trying to look at my notes. I've got so many notes. <laughs> I'm going to bring that closer so I don't have to look across the other side of my screen. Um, uh, and like what I've done to kind of get there. So yeah, you celebrate. Brilliant. I can celebrate that. Dom, mm. absolutely an amazing achievement, really. Congratulations. Yeah. Um, I get a new suit as well, actually. So um, I might... Like I'm gonna like wave my arms around, but clearly it'll be somewhere on the screen. But I'm gonna put I'll probably put a picture of like the current suit that I have. But basically on the like there's almost like the seams on my t-shirt. If you can see it, the seams on my mm. t-shirt here, you get a black stripe down them, and on the at, where the seams on your jeans would be down the middle, you also get that. So new set of dough box for me. Just to don't mention well. seams. <laughs> don't mention seams to Swanee. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. You've just gone and brought uh, it up again. Brought a tear to his good. eye. So I think the big thing, and I think Jerry, you've pointed out this bit, is how much more relaxed I am now after the 100%. grading. Um it was a very stressful lead up. Mm. Um I was almost like anxious to not get sick before it because you needed to be at your peak physical condition for quite a while. Um and like the stress, like how much more relaxed I am now that it's done. <laughs> yeah, it it was so obvious on that last call that we had when you when you announced mm. to people to a broader audience that you'd done it mm. and you got your fourth degree and I was like, yeah, it's just you seemed like a different person, like a whole weight had been lifted off your shoulders. Yeah, and I think the second bit that I kind of want to go into before I kind of make the real announcement, so to speak, and I've been where I'm talking for like ten ten minutes now. Um, obviously, during that time. I've I had like a really intense kind of course of therapy over sort of 10 15 10 to 15 weeks I can't remember I think it was 12 in the end um at the you know and had a couple of things like my official OCD diagnosis which anybody who knows me is going oh well that's flipping obvious we could have told you that years ago yes but I've you know officially having it on a bit of paper that goes you have this um don't quite have the label stamped on my forehead but <laughs> we could get there maybe I'll get it tattooed Jerry do it <laughs> maybe, maybe that's that my be first, first. It should be fir it should be your first one and it should be on your forehead if you're gonna go <laughs> if you're gonna do it Go big or go You've home. You've had a tate. Would that not be really painful? That would on your forehead. Yeah, it would be. Yes, yeah, because yeah. <laughs> it's very close to the bone. That's gonna hurt. Yeah, yeah. I would thought anywhere that's close to the bone, mm. like your knee, your elbow, or anything like that, it's gonna be really painful. Yeah, I had shoulders, so it's that's easy. But yeah, forehead's yeah, yours gonna is, hurt. Yours, well, yours is like dealt, isn't it? Here, yeah, it's, yeah, Just so. yeah. Um, so that has also helped significantly that's given me the capacity to think like the therapy just kind of took it basically hasn't solved longer term stuff it solved the, the the short term stuff there gave me capacity to think and and which is one of the reasons why if you've if you know me outside of this podcast you'll be like dom you're so much more relaxed I'm like yeah because outside of work is is now not stressful and i can deal with the stress inside of work because i've got capacity to think about it and to a certain extent i think the biggest thing that both we've come away is this the stuff that happens inside the company happens in every single company and the grass is not greener somewhere else. The grass is greener where you water it. And I'm just going, do you know what? And the easiest way for me to water that is to sometimes go, I don't give a shit. <laughs> like, like to put it bluntly, make the changes, do this, do that. Are you paying me my salary? Are you paying me enough to care that much? No. So therefore I'm going to take it, do the best job I can in the, seven to eight hours of a working day and then i'm going to come home and do whatever i want to do so that's what that's really helped with um 
so yeah that that's been a real game changer i think in terms of um like my own mental health journey especially in the last kind of i'd say three to four months and that's only going to help you because it's about setting those parameters between well i say parameters it's about not getting too emotionally involved and, and getting pulled in so you need to sort of detach yourself from stuff to a degree don't you mm. for, for your own self-preservation and i think it's i was hoping you're going to use the phrase and then i can immediately jump into the segue i'm going to see if you're going to use the phrase so carry on <laughs> uh <laughs> pressure um pressure 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 what phrase well uh work you've nearly got balance. it you're set i'm set yeah i'm setting parameters boundaries oh, boundaries there we go <laughs> yeah actually so why am i saying parameters boundaries is a much better word yeah yeah, yeah boundaries yeah which, which you are and and um because a lot of this comes down to and i've noticed this it's a natural thing it, it's human nature you get most frustrated at things you can't control so yes. there's the whole thing around spheres of control, isn't there? And spheres, so you have your sphere mm. of con- direct sphere of control, sphere of influence. Control. There are other layers. Can sphere of just... Sphere gone. of whatever. <laughs> Fringe or... <laughs> yeah, basically. Um, but, but yeah, so the stuff that, that's within your control, you sort of go, oh, damn it, I, you know, I'm fed up with this. And then you just jump on it and, and fix it. Yeah. But it's, it's usually the stuff that's out of your sphere of control where you just go, oh, it's just frustrating as hell. There's nothing I can do about it. So, so you do need to detach from that. And I, I've, mm. and I'm so glad that you have, because otherwise it's not sustainable. It's not sustainable. You've got your, you've gone through. You know, you kind of did that with work when we talk about your job change. You know, it was that was an extreme case of you going. No, this is my boundaries now. Yeah. Like I don't want to deal with that gumph. I think is the best word to put up to do it. Um, from you know, and it's that setting that setting of boundaries of going. Actually, I just want to do my job, Joel. I want to be really good at my job role. I enjoy my job role now. And actually, all of the how do you call it corporate nonsense. Just take a step back and breathe and go. This has been the same in any other company. And and oh yeah, and it's no different. You can have some really pessimistic view about it. Yeah, no, it's no different. Anyway, I think I think what you said is absolutely right. It's about it's what you make of it, where the situation that you're in, and make the most of it because. Yeah, I've, yeah. I've been in so many companies and, and whether it's a small company, large company, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter about the, mm. the sector that you work in. The, most of the challenges are the same. And actually mm. what I did, in fact, what, what I find amazing is, so it's no surprise to people who are regular listeners, but I, I changed my role. I moved from a job with a lot of, uh, line management responsibility and being responsible for a, a, a capability to a job where I'm sort of I'm boots on the ground. I'm, I'm directly supporting uh, delivery. Mm. Um, and somebody said to me, oh, what's the, what's the difference between the two? You know, why are you enjoying your job so much more now? And I said, because I get to the end of the week and I'm just tired. I'm Whereas before I was tired and stressed. So I was just as tired mm. and exhausted, but I was stressed as well. Whereas now I'm just tired. Um, mm. And I can deal with that. Um, but but it's amazing. I've had about six people say to me over the course of the last year, because I've been in this role, by the way, for a year. So it was a year Tuesday. I know. Yeah. Um, mm. And I've, I've had about six people over the course of, of that, that period, people in quite senior positions say to me, you know, I really admire what you've done. Like, yeah. Oh, I do and, as well. And seriously considering doing the same, and I'm like, well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, go for it if that's what you want to do. It's just, it, it for me, it was about oh, I'm in a really stressful situation, but that stressful situation is never going to go. So, mm. so what's then within the sphere of my control? Well, I just step away from that. I need to yeah. remove myself and distance myself from that that stressful situation, which I yeah. did. Exactly. Um, God damn, recording during the day. That sunlight's changing all my yeah. lighting. But what's interesting, that's a really brilliant segue into my second bit, which you know what I'm going to say next, but mm. a lot of people that listen to this podcast, a few of them do, um, but specific people. But um, anybody from Taekwondo that 
listen to this won't know because this is the first time I'm announcing this decision and I'll put out on Instagram and Facebook post about this but um during my journey I'm going to call it a journey during my journey to fourth degree I've made the decision that I am officially at the end of this year retiring from competitions um and uh yeah I, it feels really nice and some of that is boundary setting like because I love taekwondo but there are bits that have really you know that 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 have kind of eaten away at my life and I'm going to go into them. I'm not going to go into too much detail because a because you don't want to listen to me for 45 minutes because I could talk about this for 45 minutes but also because some of it is quite personal and and you kind of I've taken a real good reflection on that um for me my work and my career is is has taken a really good forward trajectory but I have to make similar decisions to Jerry about actually is the job role that I've got myself into the one that I want to do longer term or are there some stress and strains now if you went back six months ago I'd say actually I'm really tempted to do what Jerry did now actually not too bad because I have less stress outside of work the biggest lift off my shoulder was making this decision to retire um just for context I have been competing at a high level for 15 years and when I say a high level I mean you've got tournaments that my organization runs and they were they are unfortunately our, my the organization I'm part of has taken a bit of a dip and a bit of a shrink especially since the pandemic um and you know and, and, I, and i'm actually part of a team that's trying to try and hopefully fix that but so i've done tournaments with like you know 400 people as a local organization to budapest which i mentioned at the beginning was 1500 people uh, now next year is suppose is argentina 2024 world cup which would be great but actually i've come to realize it? for argentina Pardon? it's over 2000 isn't it in argentina well so Fun fact, the second sport, national sport for Argentina is ITF style taekwondo after the traditional football. Um, it's I don't know why, it just seems to be really popular in Argentina. So yes, um, the tournament is over nine days, not seven. So yeah, it, it, it's, they reckon there's going to be two and a half thousand uh, people. Um, but yeah, I've decided that I'm not doing that World Cup. Um, a, because I've graded, I need to get to, the, to my thing. But um, yeah, so I've done 15 years, um, and although I'm 31, uh, 32, I'm the oldest on the, our squad now by 10 years plus. Um, I think it's 11, I think I've worked it out to be. Um, but it's the number of miles. I've been through four generations of our squad within my organization. I've seen, I was at the end of the, like, the, the, the next one. Then I saw kind of what I call actually the one that Swanee was the main category for. There was a group, group so you've got like, you know, uh, Swanee, uh, um, Phil and Mike Whitlock, Dave Pixton, th th those, those, and they were amazing folks. They were phenomenal. Um, and that was kind of my early color belt to like first degree days, um, which I got involved. Um, then I had like a, a section where we got a, like a quite a junior team. And I was sort of like the mid, my mid 20, uh, like early twenties to mid twenties, like the, early, and they were all sort of like 16 or sort of, 18 to 19 um and then unfortunately they just all disappeared to university and it never kind of fruitioned into another men's team or women's team or whatever you want to call it so it, it they were really good in their junior categories and won a load of stuff and that was kind of jamaica 2014 time um then you had like 2020 uh sorry no, 2016 sorry they're every two years was um budapest 2018 was australia we didn't do australia but um, Budapest there was literally like I think it was only about five or six of us that went because that team had just disappeared and there was like a couple of uh, young people that were just coming up 2022 didn't happen because yay pandemic uh, no sorry 2020, 2020 didn't yeah. happen yeah. sorry yay pandemic um, and then 2022 which I did last year was um, Slovenia great fun but we then had this new kind of squad that's just come in and they're all sort of like sort of between the ages of like 14 and 20 now and then they're, they're really building a strong team. So it's, I feel in a good state to kind of say, actually, it's my time to kind of back. I know, in fact, the weekend just gone. I know it was good because um, in my patterns category, I got, I ended up with bronze, but um, I ended up going against at one point, it was a league. So it was a little bit more complicated, but I ended up going against um, uh, what a, uh, one of the other third degrees who's 18 and he, beat me in this tournament and that's not to say oh i'm really jealous and i should have beaten him but that's to say actually that proves to the point it's like i can't now technically compete and 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 do that and 
actually Swanee was one of the referees and he said, actually, I gave it to your way. But, you know, just at a stage where I just can't keep going. Um, I had, I actually have a list. I actually have 82 medals over my 50 year, 50, wow. 15 years, um, which I thought, oh, that's quite, that's, that's all right. And I've got one more tournament to go, but less likely to medal at this one. Um, and I've got, you know, a bunch of awards and stuff like that. So fairly reasonable stat, but the reasons why I'm retiring, are, um, I've, I've spoken about the generation, um, but there, there are, there are three other reasons why I really kind of look at retirement. First is pain management. Um, so for those that don't know, obviously, I I have probably had more injuries than the rest of the squads put together. These days, I think I've torn every muscle from shoulders, back, hips, calves, quads. I think my worst was a grade two adductor, which was 39 weeks, which fortunately I did in the middle of the pandemic. So, yay. Um, but at the moment as well, I'm being investigated for my hip. I, you know, con- consistently a level four pain on that if, at all times. That's why I'm not, you know, if you look at me, it's not because I've got ADHD. It's because I'm just going, that hurts. I need to shift or something like that. Um, and I just can't do an athlete level of training anymore. Like I can't, like I, you know, seven days a week, twice a day type thing. It's hard on the body and I'm, I just can't do it anymore. Um, the irony actually being that if, when I, I'm, I'm not stopping training, the irony being if, when I switch down to sort of five days a week, maybe six days a week, if you include like a recover, like a, uh, like a recovery day where I'm active recovering and not just a straight doing nothing. The irony might be, I might get better, but I'm not, not holding my breath. Um, the second bit actually for me is a bit more on the social side. Um, and, and the next two kind of come, come together, like, as a natural inter- introvert, I find it really difficult to go up to, to new people. Um, once you get to know me, you can't shut me up, as I'm sure Terry has realized over the years. Shut up, Dom. Um, <laughs> but I find that what that means is um, it's a little bit elitist in the tournaments because it's a bunch of competitive people. Now, I'm really competitive, but there are, you know, it's it's listening to people complain about other people that don't agree with things even though it's a martial art especially at this level like you know so and so from the top from the board doesn't like this person from a board or this competitor doesn't get on with this competitor and i'm like do you know what? and listening to other people complain about that i realized i don't care <laughs> i realized i made the right decision to retire and go i don't care about all this politics that comes into the competition side of things or organizational side of things i just want to i just want to train my martial art and just like be so the Taekwondo oath. One of the last li- the last line is uh, is to is be a champion of freedom of justice and build a p- more peaceful world. And I was like, that's the bit that resonates with me. Not, am I going to win like twenty six gold medals? Am I going to be like the best at this? Am I going to organize this tournament? Am I going to be the best instructor? Am I going to earn loads of money from doing this? Which is, you know, be surprised at how. And I get people need to earn a living, but surprised at how many people like money, 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 money. And it's like just like teach for the love of it to a certain extent and the money will naturally come um and i just realized that i just have no desire to be like i'm going to talk to that person because he's you know he you know he's a superstar and stuff like that or you know i want to be friends with him because he's a superstar it's like no i want to be the kindest person on there i want to get to know people gen genuinely not not just on a surface level for instagram followers and stuff like that and the other bit is as i said that competitor mindset like I don't want to be a competitor. I'm a martial artist. I want to keep that, like that humbleness. Um, and I was speaking to one of the parents of uh, one of the other squad members, and I was saying, like, I don't want to be remembered for the amount of gold medals that I that I I've won. I don't I don't care. Like, and I'm not going to be because I wasn't a super. I'm not a superstar, and I'm not. You know, I haven't won that much. I've done a su- significant amount of losing. In fact, I went I went a nine year streak. Um, for one specific tournament where I never went through a round. I still turned up to that tournament every year. Um, but yeah, I, and when I got through a round, flipping the whole squad celebrated as if I won the whole damn thing. <laughs> um, and I ended up getting a bronze eventually at that tournament last year. So, oh no, this year, sorry, just gone. Um, and, and that's okay, but I just want to be, re- I'm a martial artist. I want to remain that, the humility. My, the fact that I've earned my fourth degree and I'm going to be, there's a symbol on you because you've got those stripes puts a little bit of pressure but i'm like i don't want people to remember me for that i want people to go um to just sort of say 
the thing I said was, if I die tomorrow, I want people, well, do you remember Dom? He was a nice guy. And that's the bit that I want to be remembered for. So I, I've decided, like, as I've gotten that competitive mindset has pulled more people in. I'm like, I just want to take a step back and, and do that. So can I just jump in a second there? So on that last... No, that's good. I'm at the end of my reasons why yeah. I'm retiring. Well, on that, on that last point, on that last point, I think you can tick that box already, Dom. Most people have said that. A few people have said that yeah, to me. Yeah, well, I was talking to somebody the other day um, and said, you know, like, probably the nicest person that I know. I try. That's 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 all I will say is I try on that. <laughs> success is, uh, is, you can't judge your success on what other people say on that because it's a principle. So I will, as long as I believe that I've been as kind as I possibly can, whether people actually perceive me or kind doesn't affect me. My principle yeah, is just it's, be as kind yeah, as possible. Yeah, I get, I get that. So, yeah, uh, it's, you know, I couldn't have done, it's been a long journey. I I couldn't, like, I've been quite harsh on like the competitor mindset and some of the politics. I like to point out 99% of the people on the competitor side of things are lovely, as it always is, right? I, I've been like, I've literally been like, you know, it's gone wrong and, you know, in a competition and inspiring or something. And I've been taken out, like whether it's, you know, concussion or injury or whatever. And the other person has been devastated, even though they want to win. They're like, I'm so sorry. And I'm like, it's great. The amount of times I've gone to the floor, we've performed, you know, I always like to do it, throw some shapes is what I'd normally refer my patterns to. I've thrown some shapes. They've been the right ones. I've gone up to the other one. They've gone, wow, your, your pattern was amazing. I go, it was all right. You were brilliant as well. Like it, it was close. Um, and, you know, there are some really, really good people. And, you know, you meet some amazing people. It's the it's that 1% politicalness that I just think, oh, I can't be dealing with this. I don't, I don't, I don't care. So I like to point out that like pretty much everybody that helps on my journey is, has been amazing. Um, I'm going to, when I put out my actual post, I'll put in a list of all the people I want to thank because there's, there's that, but you know, everybody from Taekwondo to my masters to Swan, Swan has been a real influence. Um, the, like all the generations, there's been people that I've kind of really, you know, really wanted to be support whether you know steph's been a real big support aaron aaron my best mate who i've known for 26 years amazing support well, he got me into it the bugger so you know can't really complain about that all the squad members um and even those outside of my organization so there's a few people like the dutch contingent have been amazing um you know uh, i've got to shout out mr uh mr penman specifically who also does a podcast or did do a podcast but he's an amazing business person but he's real big inspiration for me as well um and then yeah you know jerry you're one of the people i've got to thank just oh, well, just as a friend just to support on the journey um and you know laura samwise um and and karen especially just those people that i've just been done uh and then my pt kev who's <laughs> i think it's just kept me together sometimes with duct tape like literally so uh, yeah, it's, it's not, those not just I've good for showers, is it? <laughs> no, it's no, it's good for well. like. I mean, I mean, if you should have seen me on my grading, you know the tape that you see on tennis players yeah. quite often on their elbows. Like I was like, it was across here, it was all along my back, it was all up down my hip, just to try and hold me together because I tournament train, so I expect to do a pattern and then have a break for a, a round or two, and then a pattern or maybe two patterns if it's a if it's a world uh, world level, you do two patterns one of grade one of any um but yeah but a grading i had to do like 12 patterns in a row so i just needed to be held together for long. <laughs> so yes that's my big announcements i am retiring from competitions this year um and the big bit i suppose that i think really hones on is like what are my next steps um so obviously i've got some health and recovery to do i had the liver infection last year and there's certain bits of my health that seem to be diminished um like my kidneys currently are not functioning 100 percent. so i don't know if that's a knock-on effect from what i've had i'm probably there's a there's a a chance that i've got surgery on my hip um or something to kind of get that repaired um that would be great if it could be surgery and no pain i'd be, love that that'd be amazing um but also just a bunch of it. Like I did Slovenia last year in the midst of my liver infection. I have no idea how hard that was to try and train. And you're like on your knees after like three movements. Oh, just in insane. Um, 
I want to buy my house. I still live in the same flat that I'm renting for the last nine years. So um, I'm sure there's going to be another journey for the podcast as Dom goes, why is it so difficult to buy a flipping house? This solicitor's an idiot. That thing's an idiot. That's dumb. That's stupid. I lost this money. It's, that's going to be a painful one. Um, and uh, the other one that I think was interesting. So I want you to guess. I, might, I don't know if I've done this with you yet, Jerry, but I want you to guess. When was my last non-Taekwondo holiday? Oh, uh, I'm tempted to say Barcelona, but yeah, but do you know how long ago? It? So that's true. But how long ago was that? Oh my god, two years ago. Two years, two years ago. ago. Yeah, it's about a year and a year and three quarters now. Um, I have I have had one additional one, which is, um, which was a. Just a little bit less than that, which was uh, for Sam Wise's German wording. But, oh yeah, but that uh, um, yeah, but that's different. I think that's different. so. Yeah. My first, so bear in mind, most of those are like like long weekends. My last non-event holiday. So what I mean by that, I'm not going and doing a wedding. Barcelona was a stag do with Taekwondo people. Like to point out, everybody yeah, but one true. person on there yeah. was Taekwondo. So like there was still kicking and stuff like that, um, albeit just not like as vigorous as just a lot more drinking um my last non-event holiday was 2013 no i've either no been on way. holiday i've either gone away with this with a taekwondo for a taekwondo thing whether that's a seminar or whether that's that um you know florida was a seminar and i did four days in florida i flew out arrived Next day, we registered, did half a day, did another whole day, did another half day, slept, and then traveled back. So I've, all of my holidays have been like that. Um, or they've been for things like a wedding or a, a stag do. But those have only recently been the last couple of years. And even then, they're like, fly out, do the event, mm. fly back. Um, the rest of my holiday has either been used to just recover or, you know, with work or from that or that. So... I'm going to go on holiday. <laughs> I'm going to go on holiday in the next, definitely for the next couple of years. Maybe not next year, depending on budgets and houses and stuff like that. But at some point, I'd like to actually go away and just have some time. I've seen a lot of the insides of sports halls <laughs> in a lot of countries. You must be fed up with strip neon lighting. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Wow, 10 years ago. In fact, flipping egg. My worst experience of our, our holiday was um, Italy... I want to say it was it was early, so it's like twenty must have been twenty fifteen. I flew to Italy on the Friday night, um, arrived at like ten PM, did the tournament on the Saturday, um, and I ended up getting the it was an open tournament as in like so the patterns were open so you could do any pattern that you that was it was a designated pattern but it could be any pattern so i got chose chonji the first pattern lost i was the first person in the whole tournament to go up and me and my the person i was with at second degree had got chonji and i lost the round very very close but i lost the round so i then watched the rest of the tournament we got back from that tournament like 10 p.m. in the hotel and our flight the next day was like uh, i think it was something ridiculous like 8 a.m. because i remember we had to drive to the airport in the dark so arrived in the dark um got to the hotel wandered over to uh to the sports hall spent 10 hours in the sports hall from like 9 a.m to about to about 6 7 p.m went out got some dinner went back to the hotel slept for like six hours and they got the flight back sunday uh, sunday morning oh, geez. and that's all i saw of italy on that trip I've, I've subsequently been to italy again but uh yeah that's, that's literally some of the tournament. So, uh, like, uh, when we would do sh condensed taekwondo drips, that's some of my tournaments. That's crazy. Just done. So yes, um, and yeah, and then and that those are the main things. Um, there's a little bit as well. I, I I've kind of sort of gone. I wanted to give myself more time. When I talk about boundaries, like I have been single for quite a while, so it's like, do I need to get myself back on the dating scene? Um, the therapy that I had that like looked at like my OCD and and like the, the thing that I was struggling with was PTSD around um fight or flight so i was very much like i'm so stressed that i'm like oh i'm just constantly in fight or flight mode now i've had some time to think it's like okay do i need to address i've addressed the symptoms do i now need to address the cause mm. so I, I want to go into like a longer exploration about like almost like a life coach therapist and kind of go right what do i want to achieve in life what's the next steps for me and things like that um 
that I've just never really addressed and sort out some of the the bits that's that holding me back, shall we say, from both of those things. So yeah, my Dom's big retirement boundary setting. I'm still going to do Taekwondo. I still love it. Um, I still think I'll actually go to a tournament next year. Um, that's not a local one, not an organizational one. I think I still might go to the Holland Cup. Whether I compete is another matter, but I may just go as a spectator because I know the the Dutch contingent so well. Um, but yeah, um, and I'll still be doing things like our annual summer camp where we go and camp in a field looking over Croyd Bay. Yeah, that's... But but it's little things like, so instead of me being like, so this year I was like, I'm on it because I was training every day and things like that. Whereas this time I'm going to be like, well, yeah, I'm going to train every day, but do I need to be at my best? No. So I, in the evening I can have a cider or two or I can have a barbecue rather than like the salad leaves and stuff like that. I need to keep weight down. You know, if if something clashes with like a Formula One race that I want to watch, I'm going to prioritize that over like necessarily training and things like that. So it's, it's that boundary setting to allow me to redo it. And somebody said to me, or oh, you'll miss it. And I said, I want to, that's the bit I want to miss Taekwondo. I want to reignite that excitement to go, Oh, I get to do Taekwondo rather. Okay. I've got to go and train Taekwondo. Yeah. yeah. And Mike Tyson said, you know, I think it was Mike Tyson that said, I hated every minute in the training thing, but it meant that the pain in, in the competitions didn't exist because I won. And I'd like to point out, I've done that pain in training, but you don't always win. And there's only so much that body can take. So it's that nice boundary setting to allow me to re-enjoy Taekwondo, refine the love for it in a different way. Um, and to make a decision about what I want to do next, return to competing later on. It's a soft retirement. Yeah. Do I want to go into umpiring, coaching? Yeah, there's um, so many options, aren't there? So, but, yeah, there's yeah. still a few options for me to do, yeah. So yeah. The big retirement reveal. Dom is wow. retiring. Uh, and I'm going to have a great clickbait for this bloody thing. It's going to be retiring at 31. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. going to be great. Like, what? So you know, have about so, yeah. 100,000 views. Um, well, good for you, Dom. I, I, I'll say mm. well, a couple, few things. One, really big, massive congratulations again, because it's not, um, it's not just, it's not about, what you've done in that that process of getting your your fourth degree it's mm. you know specifically for that it, it's that whole journey that you've been on the whole time everything that's led up to it, everything that you've done all the sacrifices that you've made and i think that's a key thing there is the sacrifices mm. that you've made so how um it's testimony to to how how dedicated you've been because you've sacrificed a lot and what's nice is that you've sort of acknowledged the end of a, that chapter of no, well, not mm. the end. It, it, no, 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 it, it, is. Well, it well, is. It is, I suppose. Yeah, I suppose in a way. It's not the yes, end of the story. Yes, it's an end of a chapter. But it's, an end, it's, it's the story yeah. is ongoing, but it's an end of a chapter, start of a new one mm. in, in the mm. story that and is Dom, Dom's life. What, what's interesting is when I made that decision, I made that decision about two weeks before my grading. Uh, and only one person found out before the grading because um and uh, one of my old coaches uh mrs mccall found out before because she was asking how i was feeling lean up the grade i said i feel terrible um and she was you know you know what's your journey being like like think about yeah. where you've got to what you've done and i said yeah and i think i'm gonna i'm gonna retire after this as well and she said i think that's the right decision she didn't didn't bat an eyelid she said looking at where you are and how you're feeling like it just makes sense and um You've got to hang it up sometime, right? You can't. I, people always say, "Oh, I wish I never." So there's some people that say they wish they never retired, and I think they were forced into it, whether they because they were owning schools or children or things like that. I haven't been able to balance like the the, the training for a tournament that's required and life mm. and work, right? So you know, there are times where all I think about is I do training, work, training, work, and the only thing other the other thing I really do is is um, uh is sleep and eat and even that sometimes is optional especially sleep um and when the podcast came along I thought, like you can tell how busy it was so for those that don't know i do a lot of the, the the tech side and the building side and stuff like that which meant if you look at stevie t's podcast i feel a bit guilty as i've just not had time to do or hadn't had time to do any of the promos for it because although the grading was the day before it came out the last two and a half weeks especially 
um, I was knack- I'm just so tired. Like I just like it's almost like the the time and that relief is just kind of done, like done me in. Um, and I think that's a good thing. Like it's a good thing to experience that. And I'm now just getting into it. So you know, this weekend I'm going to go and look at Steve's po- the podcast we did with Steve. Steve's podcast, the podcast with Steve. And you know, I'm going to do a bit of promotional now stuff and get that going to get it re going because the views are a little bit lower than we'd like. Um, and and just things like that. It's that just, it, but it's it's now sort of saying, well, actually, taekwondo is going to be a huge part of my life. And I'm not saying I'm never going to come back to competitions. I'm only five years away from being in veterans, mm-hmm. veterans being 36 plus. Um, so you know, there may be a case of actually, I spend the the, the thing I really wanted to reiterate to the, my coaches when I told them one of them being Swanee was, um, 2024 needs to be a year off. For me i need that recovery time i need to sort of look back you know my type my 15 years in competitions have included um two financial crashes a pandemic and a potential of a world war and people go oh yeah but you weren't weren't really that involved and it still affected me i had to fund mm. these tournaments and stuff like that I fund my travel to these tournaments the pan the pandemic really kind of oh, threw a lot of people on yeah, the bus so it's like actually i need to you know, I need to process that now. I need some time to process that now. So that that's what I think is really important around the the retirement for me. Um if that makes sort of sense. It does. <laughs> it totally. Sense. That's yeah, it's well I'll, I'll say this, Dom, you know, um I'm always here for you, so um mm. I will continue to be here for you, whatever the chapter is. So it'll be interesting yeah. to see what, what how things pan out. It is. And the other thing is to say, I'm excited about the next chapter. Like, it's not dread. I'm kind of excited to say, oh, what, what can we do next? Yeah. What can we do next? So, yeah. Yeah, you've got to look at it. There's possibilities. You have mm. to look at the possibilities. You can't... You can't. Um, I think the best way to describe it is you You get so familiar with something, so used to something, yeah, something that plays such a big part in your life. You can't grieve for it. Mm. when you when you decide to and i can always and you can always go back exactly there's no reason i can't yeah. go back right enough about me <laughs> um we do have poignant questions but i'm going to save those because i think they're so good that Jerry, <laughs> the ones that jerry's come up we need to save them for a bigger podcast because they could be like something's later um we've got one thing to, we've got two call outs to kind of do haven't we we've got to choose the movie because we haven't done a movie review we haven't. so you need to tell me a movie that you want to yeah that you wanted to do and uh, and i've got a movie for you oh okay and we need to do celebrity call out corner and then we need to do celebrity call out celebrity corner. corner that's this is the proof that i would have loved to have grabbed that from the yeah, Steve's podcast and, then... and played it i might still do that in the post edit so you've got a movie for me. So, I'm I'm keen to know. Let's start with your one then. Well, so I've got a movie that you've watched before, but I just want you to re-watch. Okay. I want you to get back into nitty gritty and I just want you to laugh okay. at it. Okay. So between now and the next podcast, yep. I want you to re-watch Hot Fuzz. <laughs> I right. only watched and it I want... two months ago. <laughs> I, I, I can I watch know, it a hundred times. To, I love it. Uh, I want you to re-watch it, it and I want you to I want you to do two things okay. for me. I want you to I want you to choose the best uh a, like quote that's not like a popular one i want you to choose like a real nit bit that you think oh yeah Ooh, that, okay. forget about that uh, nobody ever remembers but it's so yeah. good and then i want you to see if it changes your mind about the order of the cornetto series because i think hot fuzz is the best one and you like the world's end but i want you to rewatch hot fuzz and i want you to really think about it i will i promise you but it's going to take a lot to yeah to convince me so i think i've seen Shaun of the dead probably maybe th- four or five times i've seen hot fuzz about 20 times and i've seen the world oh, I've, yeah easy 50 times but there's something about the the, the 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 reason why i love the world's end so much which will, which will be very difficult to sort of for any other film to overcome it's that opening scene because that mm. opening scene takes me straight back to my childhood. <laughs> to when you wear double denim. <laughs> to, where I, to when I was wearing double denim. It literally teleports me straight back to my school days, back to A-levels. 
and mm. um and it's very nostalgic for me so and and the crazy thing is there's a bit where he says right um when he's com- he's going around and he's convincing everybody that they should do the redo the golden mile and he said look i'll pick you up from high wickham station at, at three and um mm. and high wickham is where i went to school so High yeah. Wycombe Station, when I see it, I just go, oh my God, that's High Wycombe Station. That's crazy. That's I mean, that, that might there. be why, that might be like why I like Hot Furs because the this the the village that they filmed Hot Furs is not too far from where I live now. It's Wells, so. isn't it? Yeah, yeah, Wells is there. It's, it's the, Wells city, is lovely. The town. And I went, I drove through that the other yeah. day. So, yeah, and you can recognise different. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. yeah. I've, I think I've done. I think a friend of ours took us to Wells because we did Wells Cathedral, um, mm. and. And I remember they um, they said, "Oh, let's let's do splat the rat." Yeah, let, let, they did part of the walk and said, "Oh, yeah, this is where they filmed, you know, the bit where yeah. the thing landed on his head, and this is where they." Did. Oh, yeah. okay. So, um, mm. yeah, okay. I, I promise you, I will. That, that's that's easy for me because I just love that. Mm. Oh, it's such a brilliant film. Um, yeah. So yeah, so the film that <laughs> I had two. Mm-hmm. Have you seen any of these? They live and planes, trains, and automobiles. I've not seen either of them. Ooh. Okay. Well, I think it's an easy one actually because I couldn't decide which one. I couldn't decide on which one, and I, I'm going to go for mm-hmm. planes, trains, and automobiles because, because we talked about cool runnings. So you've got uh, okay. the two main characters. You've got you've got John Candy and you've got Steve Martin, and that film. Yeah. And I'm not going to spoil it, but there's something that happens at the end where you go, oh wow, okay. And it's it, it's actually a very touching movie. It's a very, very funny film, but it's also very touching at the same time. Mm. It, it's, okay. it's got one of my favourite scenes, <laughs> which I can't... Uh, which is one of the scenes that, that we couldn't do in, in the quiz um, because there's right, so much okay. swearing. But it's a scene where he, he, he ends up in the airport rental car place <laughs> yeah i've had many experience of an airport rental car yeah well <laughs> you'll love this it's one of the funniest scenes ever in a film it's, brilliant yeah it's brilliant so so planes trains and automobiles and it's john candy at well one of his best yes john candy one and of his best uh, performances. martin steve martin steve, steve martin. martin's incredible yeah yeah cool okay right celebrity call out caller all over to you celebrity jerry Celebrity call out corner <laughs> so I'm going to do this. I'm going to do it. Mm-hmm. The list is building. There's something about celebrity call out corner. <laughs> so I was talking to, I was talking to an absolute dear friend of mine, and we were saying we were talking about this, and I said, "I'm going to take this up a notch." And they're like, "No, for God's sakes, don't do it." I'm going to do it. We've <laughs> called out Johnny Depp, and mm-hmm. we've called out Keanu Reeves. Mm-hmm. It's about time I. I think I dropped a note to the agent. <laughs> I'm not even joking. With a link to the podcast and just say, look, we just want to find out their favourite pizza toppings and go to meal deals and stuff like that. <laughs> um, we want to we want to talk about idioms and stuff with them. So, so this is a call out again for Johnny Depp. It's a call out for Keanu Reeves. <laughs> Actually, I'm doing all of the call outs. So I'm going to do. I'm going to do the, a third. Yeah, one yeah I, then... I, 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 this is this is this is my. It's my favorite bit. I love listening do, to your call outs. You need to do yeah. one as well at some point. Um, mm. In the future, okay. So, so this one is um, uh, a call out to the context behind this is um, mm. again talking to the same person. We're talking about. Um, <laughs> There's somebody, there's a famous singer that this person really likes. And I said, um, I said, oh, okay, because you do re- refer to this person a lot, or you do like refer to their songs a lot. Um, and then, uh, and then we were talking about, well, you know, it's interesting because I, <laughs> the question came back, which is, like, have you got a man crush? And I said, yeah, I <laughs> suppose I have. I had sort of thought about it. It's like, okay. Um, and I've got a man crush on this guy. I'm not even afraid to say it. I'm mm. just saying it. So there you go. So this might make it a bit awkward. You might now not want to print <laughs> podcasts. Be like, I don't know. But um, I do have a man crush on him. 
he's an amazing actor. Um, he has starred in my favorite TV series of all time. I think it's I think it's the best TV series ever, um, which mm-hmm. was uh, uh, The Leftovers, based on the book by Tom Perotta. Um, mm-hmm. He is the cousin of uh, Louis Theroux, the BBC okay. uh, broadcaster mm-hmm. and presenter, the investigative yeah, journalist. Investigative journalist. Um, and his name is Justin Theroux. So this oh, is a call out okay. to Justin Theroux. Bit of a left field choice. It's One a, I don't know. Not as it's a left with. field choice, but you know why not? He's my man crush. Let's get him on here. I'll do be full on Starstruck. I mean, it. I don't know. I say it's, Starstruck. I mean, for goodness sake, any one of those. Justin. Oh, yeah. Keanu. Even I would be like. Johnny Depp. <laughs> what the yeah. fringe. Right? What the fringe. It's interesting. You're, you're building up a list like Arya Stark did. But yeah. It's a, it's, a, it's a podcast guest list rather than a death yeah, list. Yeah, isn't yeah. It? It's like the complete opposite, but same sort of concept. Do you, are you going to eventually get to the point where you're going to be reciting the list before you go to sleep? Yeah, well. <laughs> Honestly, it's building in my head. I don't think I'll forget it. It's 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 like a kind of a shopping list that you'll never forget. Um, so yeah, so Depp, oh, I always Reeves, Theroux, we want you on here. Sort it out. Definitely. So I think we'll have to finish it there. It's been two hours forty nearly. Nice. Um, so yeah, good podcast. A little bit of there was a lot of Dom stories there, but so hopefully, hopefully I kept you entertained. Um, uh, the criticism for all the people that say I'm not funny. I am funny. <laughs> <laughs> you are. What are you talking about? Right. Unfortunately, you're not going to get away with it, I Jerry. Know. What are your final thoughts? No, I'm prepared. <laughs> no, it's fine. I'm prepared. Um, no, I actually Do genuinely it. prepared for this one. So, oh, it's cheating. Well, it, it's, the giveaway was uh, what I put in the uh, notes, um, which I put, I think... <laughs> Going from a caterpillar to a butterfly, but actually no. I, on a on a serious note, um, I think you. It's so important that um, you embrace for yourself change and do it mm. in a controlled way, um, and do it for the right reasons, and make sure that you make the changes for the right reasons um and and do what you you know is going to make you happy at least what you think is going to make you happy there's no guarantees in life right but yeah um yeah i just think it's easier to just stick to doing what you're doing um Mm. that is the easy option even even if it it's painful and you think, oh, I, don't, I don't want to be doing this anymore. I don't know how much longer mm. I can do this, but I can't. It's fine. Actually, just just um, don't be afraid to take that step, which is what you've done, Dom. You've made decisions. Yeah. You don't know what the future's going to hold, um, but you've made the decisions, and you and you are starting that new chapter. Um, and I'm yeah. so pleased for you. So, um, you know, whatever happens it's going to be for the best right so even even if if good things some good things aren't going to happen it's not going to be a, it's not going to be a smooth ride but do you know what no you've made the decisions take those steps forward um you've got me you've got a good network of support and, and friends that did mm. love you um like i say myself included so um you know we're all we're Absolutely. all with you dom and uh yeah, yeah, go for it's, it. It's an exciting, it's an exciting it thing, and I'm, I'm, it is. I'm looking forward to it. It's, it was like, a, as I said, it was a real relief to almost like make a few decisions and be like, I've made that decision. That's what I'm doing. Um, it's interesting. I am not looking forward. Well, I am looking forward to not looking forward to some of the reactions. I think from from the current squad members because they, you know, there was a lot of talk about, oh, we're looking, we're looking forward to all these trips and stuff like that. And so they're like, yes, it's just, I'm not going to do that. Mm. Um, I can say like they've my nickname on the squad has snuck into one of the posts and I was like I'm going to get you back. Um, they managed to sneak my nickname. They um they refer to me as El Capitan. Oh, now even though I'm not the official squad, <laughs> I'm not the official squad captain. That is held by held by somebody else. Um, who unfortunately she's she's quite a little bit unwell at the moment and difficult transport options when she's just gone to uni. Um, 
I'm not an official, the official captain, and I don't want it either. I don't like that hierarchy or things like that. But they referred to me, and it snuck onto a post on the thing, so that got released to the work, to the to the full uh, organization, Puma Puma Squad World. So I was like, oh god, here we go. So yes, I did notice that. So I've got I've words with one of the parents. Later on, but, <laughs> good, good yeah, enough words. It's good. It's good. It's good. Uh, I think retirement is gonna. Yeah. And it's a soft retirement. Like I'm not going to say never. I'm going to return to yeah, competitions, exactly. but it's 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 a soft retirement in that I'm taking a step yeah. back. Somebody else can take it forward, and or somebody you know somebody else can be, have that get that nickname bestowed upon them. And, and done but that. it's nice. So, it's nice in the yeah. way that you're doing it because you're keeping the door open, right? That's that's yeah. the key. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I just know that 2024. I need a yeah. break. <laughs> I need, I need some it. sleep. Tom, you deserve it. Definitely. <laughs> some sleep. Cool. And we shall finish it there, folks. Thank you so much for watching and listening. Um, we appreciate every single one of you that does. Um, it, like, I mean, we we said that when we aimed, did this podcast, we didn't really, we don't really, we don't really care who listens to it. But the fact that you do, we had some wonderful feedback, which I think Steve really needed this month. Actually, um, some of the feedback he caught, uh, he caught a bug and he was quite unwell. For him to take a day off is yeah, that's unusual. Very so. Unusual. Um, so the positive the positive comments towards Steve really did help. So we're going to absolutely get him back on. He's got so many more stories that we want to pull out from him. So we want to get him on the podcast, but we also want to do a complete chaos podcast with him and Hooper. And we're going to we've got I've got a few more formats. Both me and Jerry got some ideas that we're going to try, and some could work, but some can't. But we don't have a big audience, so we just we're just going to give them a go and see what sticks. Um, throw that bit of spaghetti on the wall and see what sticks. <laughs> um, so. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for listening. Please subscribe. It does help us out a little bit. Um, and we will we will catch you on the next one. Thank you, Dom. Take care, everybody. Catch you soon. <laughs>